Yeah. Agor! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Ah, the waiting is over. It's go time right now. 23 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Site One Bassmaster Elite at the original, America's original big bass destination for over 100 years, fantastic Lake Okeechobee, a legendary place. We got 104 anglers out there. Those 104 anglers and all of us watching want to see the same thing. A bunch of big, giant bass coming in the boat today. Mark Zona, what do you reckon we will see today? Well, Tommy Sanders, what we're going to do, I'm not sure what that thing is right there. <laughs> that I'm, it's a manatee. It's a platypus. Look at that thing. Oh, I'm it. just gorgeous. Little yeah. baby Clovis right there. But Tommy Sanders, <laughs> we are dealing with, well, pretty much the same Okeechobee as usual, but this time around, going to be a little bit different. We have a full body of water. You would say to yourself, with that much water in Lake Okeechobee this time around, anglers are going to be able to spread out. Well, that is not going to be the case. A lot of these areas blown out from wind, from the hurricanes, from months past. With all of that swollen water, it's really going to condense a lot of anglers, create a lot of different storylines than the last two Bassmaster Elite Series tournaments that we have covered on Lake Okeechobee. If you're watching this broadcast, you probably know all the legend and lore about that fantastic place we're looking at right there. Lake Okeechobee, the Inland Sea. For the state of Florida, outside of the Great Lakes, no other lake in North America can you not see the other side, even on the clearest day. It is a bowl, just a, almost a symmetrical bowl, nine feet on average in depth. There's no place like it. I mean, we usually start this year on the banks of the St. Johns River. This place is nothing like the St. Johns River. No, it, it's really not. And the, and the weird thing this time around, when you look at Lake Okeechobee from above, you see so much grass and, and vegetation. You say, wow, it is so target rich. But if you talk to all of the anglers, especially the local anglers, guys like Kobe Krieger, guys like a Scott Martin, they'll tell you it's the lack of vegetation under the water, the eelgrass, the hydrilla that we've seen in years past. But when you find one of those patches, whether it's 20 yards long, could be 30 yards long, that is where a lot of the bass are. But the problem with that, it has stacked a lot of those anglers on top of each other. Two things to really watch here on day number one. Can somebody break away from the pack, fish alone, or can one of these anglers figure out how to catch those pre-spawn bass that are in the dirtier water, which is a big rarity on Lake Okeechobee? All right. Well, welcome to our live Bassmaster Live broadcast. We have got uh, seven hours of live coverage from Lake Okeechobee to bring you today. And we'll also be going tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday as well. We can't wait to, to tear into it. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders, of course, here with Mark Zona, the great Mark Zona, the great Ronnie Moore, and Mike Such Sukon joining alongside as well. And uh, man, oh man, we just, uh, you know, every time we go to some giant place, Z, it's like it fishes tiny. I don't know why it works out that way. Part of the, part, part of the fact is people People like to squash down expectations. I think. Absolutely. And yeah. I think a lot of the reasons the expectations were low coming into day number one, number one, just because that's the usual theme for every single Bassmaster Elite Series angler to kind of beat down that it's going to be a catch fest. But the other number one, it's Lake Okeechobee. Obviously, if you looked at the results from the tournament that was here a week ago, they're coming. The weather that is here right now, the weather that was here last night, Warm nights, warm days have them coming. The other thing about it is this practice, you don't want to use the word wash, but blowing 30 to 40 miles per hour, a lot of anglers, wherever they got a few bites, they're banking on those areas to fire with the lighter winds here on day number one. And we talked to Davey Height yesterday in the pre-show, the preview of Bassmaster Live this week, and he said, I idled out and it looked dirtier than I've ever seen it. And there's a couple reasons why. Zona mentioned it, that high winds in practice, 30 mile an hour winds on Sunday, and a little bit lesser as we go throughout the week. That There's nothing to protect some of these places other than reed lines. But another aspect is the water's been abnormally high. It's around 16 feet, as the locals would call it. Normally it's 14 and change. That's the premier time. With it being about a foot and a half higher than normal, Normal. Nothing is protecting those reeds. Those reeds that used to be a barrier now have water up through them, and that does not filter anything. It doesn't keep out dirty water, and it kind of mucks up some of these cleaner areas that are notoriously where anglers will congregate. Well, the sun has been up for a while on Lake Okeechobee. We have got anglers on the water, and some of them already on the board. Let's take you down to one of those anglers right now, our defending world champion Jason Christie. Thank 
Female. Jason Christie in five weeks time will be defending his world championship. Tennessee River, Fort Loud and Teleco, Knoxville, Tennessee. First man on the board today, there he is. He vows, as all 104 anglers have vowed, to not get behind starting out this year on Lake Okeechobee. Determined not to do that. I think they all are. Going to give you a sweet quote from Jason Christie yesterday. He said it's the toughest he's ever seen Okeechobee. And that was kind of a theme throughout the field that we got to talk to before this tournament. I said, will it take over 80 pounds? Absolutely. It'll take over 80 pounds. So <laughs> tough is fairly relevant yes, is. here yes. on Lake Okeechobee. That is way different than Palatka, but uh, our winner from last year's St. John's event, John Cruz, is leading this one. And Brandon Card wow. had a rough off season with an ailment. Man, an, First five pounder. You know, I'm just, I got a few other boats around, not many. And I can't make up my mind if I need to kind of fish fast and try to pick up the easy ones or really slow down. So I'm just kind of playing it by ear right now. and. A great sign is I fished through here in practice and did not catch a single female. Just a bunch of, not a bunch, but a good many bucks. And the first bite I got this morning was a female, big fat female. Not big, but I mean, you know, two and a half, three pounder, that was really fat. So hopefully she's, she's got a bunch of buddies and, and, uh, you know, it gave me, I didn't really have a lot of confidence in any area that I fished in other than one that got blowed out the first day of practice. Uh, so it gave me, a, you know, it gives me just a little bit of confidence to, you know, really slow down and fish. And, and uh, it's dead calm right now, which is not, you know, optimum commission, uh, conditions for what you know, moving baits, but look at that reed right there move. That's how I caught the first females. I came by a reed and it, and it moved and she come and got it. You know, with a day off, I don't know if these fish, uh, you know, came in and, and spawned or, or are spawning. It's not a good way to, figure it out, but just need to catch one of those, you know, those great big ones in here. And the good thing about it is I got really nowhere else to, to be. So, and, and that's some of my best tournaments is whenever I just figure it out on the water practice for me was on a scale of one to ten about uh, zero even though I got some bites and stuff I just never came across that that little secret area that I could lock in and wait on them to come to me so we're just fishing first day uh, you know I know there's a lot of people watching I have there's so many people that you know have texted me and stuff and can't get, you know, live, can't start fast enough. You know, I'm ready, to, you know, I'm bored, I'm snowed in. Uh, I'm ready to watch you, you guys fish. And as much as they're ready to watch us fish, we're more ready to go fishing. But, you know, I've converted a lot of people the last few years uh, to fishermen, you know, with, with live being on Fox and stuff. And, you know, people, I got a, uh, a really close, I just talk about him and I get a bite. I got a really close friend that never watched fishing, him and his whole family. And now that live's on, um, I, I think they, I don't even think the cows get fed. Another female, she's a small female, but she's a female. I never felt her bite, I just seen it like lift up.
Well, to the cows, we are sorry. That is not our intention <laughs> for that to happen, Ralph. But it's kind of nice to hear that people are tuning in and so glad you are with us this morning. And again, we're just getting started. These guys are underway, though, and well, a couple of uh, locals are definitely part of the advance notices about this lake here. Scott Martin, in particular, who basically was born on the lake, has fished here his entire life. Well, we made a run down south. Got in here a little bit ago. Hadn't caught one yet. Just taking my time. Throwing a little swim jig, just covering a little water. Right now, trying to take advantage of maybe a early bite. No boats in here yet, which is which is good. Hopefully that'll be the case. Definitely all eyes going to be on Scott Martin today. So much, like you said, Tommy, growing up here. And one of the things Scott Martin did get to tell us, he said he has one little, you hear this from our guy Steve Bowman, a lot on the road. He's got one little hidey hole that he said there are a lot of males in. And you'll hear many of these anglers say they're looking for those males and hoping for the push, hoping for the come of those bigger females to come into these little areas. And Scott did make the comment. He said this exact spot that he's in right here, he thought he could get two or three days out of if those females showed up by day number one. But that, that off day yesterday where the anglers weren't able to practice on Okeechobee, that's kind of the dark horse in this where they're not quite sure. You know, a lot of times on Okeechobee, you just see anglers land on them where you know they could catch 20 to 30 pounds we saw that in last week's tournament here so you can be an angler that's 30 yards away and you're not catching anything you're watching the show go down but scott was very vocal just kind of hoping that this exact spot he's in down basically just call it the south shore of okeechobee really critical that it did not get more than two or three boats of the pressure in these small spots take a move to an important addition to the Bassmaster Elite Series lineup this year. The general himself, Larry Nixon, so much a part of the history of professional bass fishing. As Ronnie Moore pointed out before our... Well, I'll feel a lot better when I get that first fish in the boat, but it's a beautiful day and I know sooner or later I'm going to get in the right little area and I don't know, every morning I've always had a little bit of a slow morning. And it seemed like once it warmed up just a little bit and lightened up, these fish go to biting. And it was pretty windy in here in practice one day. And that's why I started out with that spinnerbait this morning because, I mean, I caught some pretty good fish on the spinnerbait when that wind was blowing, but that was about 10 or 11 o'clock in the day. And they just don't seem to be much happening right now. I'm not seeing anybody catch fish. and You know, we're just going to wait them out. This is what I like to do. I've got a lot of patience, and sooner or later I'll find a little clump of these reeds that's got a, several fish in it and put the poles down and hopefully catch three or four or five out of one spot. It's uh, that's the way it's been. You just work around, work around, work around. You'll finally get in one little, little bitty place and you may get four or five bites. Just bang, bang, bang. Oh my gosh. This morning was a thrill. Uh, to see that big crowd at takeoff and, you know, be back where Ray Scott built this sport. And I'm just very excited to be back. I'm anxious to get that live well cranking. Larry Nixon, 14 wins with the Bass Masters Classic Champion, two-time angler of the year. One of the most amazing things, well, we started actually here in the state of Florida. His very first bass event was 1977. That's a long time ago on the St. Johns River, but he is a guy who was in the top 10 
in AOI for nine consecutive years. That's a model of consistency. This right is here. for more of the kids watching Bassmaster. Like Ronnie, for everybody whoa, 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 your whoa, age whoa. and younger. Whoa, I'm well, almost 30, man. You, you are looking. He is absolutely, and we've known Larry for a, a, oh, such a long time. He is one of the best worm fishermen on planet. Very patient, very methodical. Uh, all of our older Bassmaster Live viewers are shaking their head right now. And, and some of the most memorable catches on Bassmaster television from that guy right there, Larry Nixon. And what was strange was I said, Larry, how many tournaments have you fished on Okeechobee? And he said, he ca calls me Mark, which is awkward for me. <laughs> he, 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 he I like said, Mark, I, I don't uh, I don't know. I don't know how many terms, but it, the number's big. And I said, he said, I always thought I would come back to the Bassmasters where I started. He said, I wanted to come back, but he said, the one consistent in professional fishing, we've learned this, is, is change. Um, he made the comment last night. He said, I have a lot of anxiety for day number one. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. You've fished so many tournaments. He said, no. He said, I've got a lot of anxiety, and I really do not want a camera in oh, my pocket. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. Well, welcome I'm back, I'm glad Larry. he relented at the last yeah, minute. Yeah. Being a, we got to be in there with Larry. Yeah, all there, Neville. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How about this? This classic oh my victory from 1983 on the Ohio River. Larry Nixon was already a giant star by oh, then, wow. one of the guys who sort of lit the fire under Toledo Bend when it first came online. And, Took that guiding career into an unbelievable career with the Bassmasters. The great thing about our fairly young sport is we get to see the pillars, many of the pillars, the, 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 the building blocks people still in action. And Larry Nixon, he came back and made his Bassmaster debut after so many years away last fall at Sam Rayburn in the Bassmaster Opens. First, first term out of the gate gets a check in the mid 20s and it finishes, and that's hard to do in a Bassmaster Open. And so Nixon still kicking and still a oh, yeah. competitor to this day. I like that tournament. It really, if you looked at that picture, a very young Arkansas Don Johnson look right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 did, I didn't, I didn't right realize now, that, but you're right. Definitely all eyes. Every time we come to the state of Florida, I'm going to get out right now with Greg Hackney, also concentrating on the North Shore of Lake Okeechobee. I did check in. Well, no, I'm zero for three right now, so I'm not feeling real well. I don't know. I think I'm a little fast on the trigger, a little faster than they are this morning. But it is going to be a beautiful day in Florida. I couldn't think of a better place to be. I like what I'm doing. <laughs> One thing to definitely watch with two of the anglers that we have on camera today, and this goes for the majority of the field, but some of them enjoy it more than others. You look at Greg Hackney, you look at Jason Christie. They do not like crowds. No. I, that is, we've come to know that. Uh, Greg Hackney said, look, man, the way that this lake is fishing, you kind of have to get in a crowd. It's almost, it's eerily similar. We'll be able to talk about a odd connection from Florida lakes to actually northern smallmouth lakes a lot of times if you're not around a crowd you are not around fish and that's the one thing that Hackney said there are so many unreachable fish right now the the small areas and really throughout the next four days of competition there's only about four or five areas with stable clearer water and it's not I'm not saying it's gin clear but stable, clear water, and he said, you just kind of have to get in the mix in this event. You don't get a lot of rat bites. You just catch females. Like the other morning in here, I had three bites, they were all females. And I'm pretty sure at least two of the bites today were both males. Only one of them was, I felt like was decent. But what's crazy is when you come in a place like this, when it's cold, you'll stay there. Well, these are Florida strain bass. A spoiler alert there, duh, yeah, which uh, a lot of guys struggle with. I mean, they especially in this place for some reason. And always, to, it, it's fair to say in Florida, we've covered so many events early, 
and late is always the big bite window, especially on Okeechobee this time of year. Bass Track showing us John Cruz, our champion at first stop last year, 22 on the Bassmaster Elite Series in the lead. Plenty more to come. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. 104 anglers starting this extended road trip that comprises the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. This is the Site One Bassmaster Elite Day One at Lake Okeechobee in Florida. Been six years since the Elite Series has been here. And uh, man, a lot has happened. Lake Okeechobee, a place where changes happen all the time. The lay of the land looks very good. Oh, what about a what? Skinner Boat's oh. big fish alert? Huh? Will Davis, our Bass Nation qualifier with a five pounder. He's got 11 and a half pounds today. He has taken the lead. Yet another fantastic rookie. We, we met some great new rookies last year. No doubt we will do exactly that Such again. Such is wanting year. picks. No. He is wanting the rookie of the year pick already. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's already pleading for it. Yeah. I got I to get to work on that. Might be Will Davis at this point. Will Davis of Alabama. Probably looking forward to Lay Lake. Nation angler. Yes. The champion, but also a college angler. He was one of the originals of college fishing at Bethel University before their dynasty, or like in the middle of their dynasty starting. Here's a man made a great run at AOY last year, Brandon Lester. I feel good. I'm just trying to kind of gauge these fish's activity level right now. I know that kind of sounds weird, but what I mean by that is I started down this stretch the very first morning. I, I literally had one bite down through here. But um, I don't know, it, it's got all the right habitat. It's got reeds, it's got dollar pads, it's got all the right ingredients. So the third morning of practice, I said, well, I'm gonna run back in there and see see what it's like this morning it was a little bit warmer um and that third day of practice down this stretch i had like a dozen bites i caught four and then I rolled my hooks over and didn't set the hook on anything else but i had some some really good bites down through here so right now i'm just kind of trying to see if i'm going to have to flip them or if i'm going to have to i was catching some on speed worm and some flipping so I'm just kind of trying to gauge what I need to do this morning. I'm not seeing a lot of activity. I did see one big one blow up over here just a second ago, but they're here. We just got to figure out what they want right now. It's it's funny right now, but it's and it's like in Florida this time of year. You get those feed windows where it seems like every fish in the area is eating. And if we can be at the right place at the right time, sometime today, when one of those feed windows opens up, we'll be. Able to, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be the ticket to winning this tournament this week. There's no doubt about it. Well, we've already got a little little bit talking about that prediction for rookie of the year. Uh -huh. uh, our one of our guys, Justin from Bass University. Saying it's going to blow, be a blowout. Bryant Smith from California. And I got to tell you something. I've heard. Uh, I've heard the same thing. I'm jumping on that bandwagon. Okay. Uh, and and uh, eerily, uh, like we're not going to give exact locations, but on the west side of the lake, you look at Brandon Lester, another rookie near him, uh, John Suckup. Mm hmm. Pretty good, man. Has a reputation. Brandon Lester talked about this area coming in late in the day. Had said he had a lot of big top water bites. That would that'd be fun here today. A lot of these anglers trying to gauge mm -hmm. if these fish have gone to spawning. Scott Martin, guys like Greg Hackney said there is no doubt with these warm nights. And granted, we're not on the right moon for a full blown spawn, but warm nights, really warm days, especially days one and two south winds. We're gonna have, you and I got to talk about it yesterday, we're gonna have a little bit of a shake up yeah. on Saturday. We're gonna have some north, northeast winds. Not generally what you want, uh -huh. but.
Let's bring in our colleague right now, a good time as any, to bring in the great Davey Height out there. Joined our team uh, the last time we were here at uh, at Okeechobee back in 2017. So, wow, uh, Davy, that that it's it's been a while, man. What a what a <laughs> time goes fast, and it's already going fast today. What are you seeing? What's kind of standing out to you? Oh well, what stands out is how common it is. You, you've heard for weeks the wind has been blowing so much here, and the first two days of practice uh, was almost a blowout. It finally laid down the second day of practice just a little bit, but gorgeous conditions to get around and run around. But I've already heard some anglers complaining about it. it's too calm i was catching them on a chatterbait or a spinnerbait so everything will definitely be changing but hopefully the the water will settle a little bit clear water is is huge here and that's what everyone's looking for and when that wind lays down the water will settle down and filter out and hopefully these anglers will be able to expand and, and you know it's over 700 square miles of fishable water but unfortunately just a fraction of that is truly fishable here this week. Davey for a, a lot of our viewers that have never been to Lake Okeechobee with this higher water and the lack of eelgrass and hydrilla really explain to them how wave action just simple wave action uproots that they, and granted we don't want to get into this uh, you do hear a lot of spraying uh, of chemicals on that hydrilla and eelgrass, but a, a lot of the big problem, it just doesn't grow well with a swollen lake. And what does that wave action do to that submerged vegetation? Yes, it is. There's a lot going on there, and it's a, it's a great question. I'll try to explain it the best I can in you know a short version. But it's if you've never been to Lake Okeechobee, you really can't. Uh, feel how you know understand how big it is and how massive it is and when we have a hurricane move across the waves get so big and there's so much current moving from one side of this lake to the other that it'll actually rip that hydrilla or that vegetation up off of the bottom i mean literally rip it off of the bottom so that's that's one thing but then also the high water the, the water's higher than i've ever actually seen it here when we we've had a bass tournament here and when you have that high water and that dirty water because it's been tur you know, so much current and, and stirring that water up so much, then that vegetation needs sunlight. It needs pre, uh, light penetration to be able to grow. So you have the, the vegetation being literally ripped up off of the bottom, but then also it, it doesn't grow back because the water level is higher and you don't have that light penetration that you need. I thought I'd seen dirty water here before, but honestly, where I'm at right now and I'm out in the lake, you can only see your bait maybe three to four inches under the surface of the water. I've never seen it quite that dirty for 90% of this lake. Davey, th uh, this is gonna be a, a little bit tougher question right here. And I asked Scott Martin this, we, I've asked Chris Lane this in years past. When you look at Florida lakes, when you look at a, a, a Toho and Kissimmee, a Harris chain, you see tournaments dominated in, in the usual cover like we're seeing on Lake Okeechobee, but you also see the presence of offshore bites. I've always wondered why you never see an angler catching them offshore on Okeechobee. And I asked Scott Martin, I said, do they live out there in the middle of this lake? He said, absolutely, for the simple fact that the netters, the, the netters that catch rough fish, they always catch giant bass in their nets. Why do you never see it a player on Lake Okeechobee? What say you, Davey Hyde? Go on, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a million dollar question Z. I've spent a lot of time out here myself out in the lake like I am right now and, and I'm looking with a mega live right now and I can see fish out here in 14 feet of water it's difficult to catch them but if we've ever had a scenario where I think it could be one out in the lake I think it's this week because there's just the areas that have the clean water there's so many boats piled in there and a four-day event is so much different than a one-day tournament to catch fish four days in a row in those crowds it would be very very difficult so we'll see got the best in the business here this week they've got the the latest and greatest and in, in sonar and all this technology and we'll see if someone can let's say crack that safe and actually catch them offshore here this week well, let's stay on that piece of equipment right there, Davey. You've got a, we always count on you to stay ahead of the game. You know what to look for, but now you got a new way, a new way to look at stuff out there. So set us up on this new system you got going. 
Yeah, it, it's really cool. I've got a Hummingbird Apex here, and I got it set up. You guys can see there's not a lot of contour on Lake Okeechobee, but where I'm at right now, and there are a few fishermen around. I don't want to get into any names right now, but there is some contour. I'm out in the lake a little bit, and I'm using my Lake Master mapping on the left to show where that contour change is, and you see my Mega Live showing that there are definitely fish right here where I'm at. And I'm not real close to a fisherman, but somebody might move in when they hear me talking a little bit. But the trick is, like you said, Z, there is absolutely fish here. We don't need the netters to tell us that anymore. We can see them with this Mega Live, but the trick is getting those fish to bite. That's exactly right. One of the things Scott Martin said about exactly that Davy Height was, Yep, they're out there in the lake, but they don't feed on artificials. And that kind of explain, explain that comment because, they're, listen, you have been around shiner fishermen in areas uh, in the state of Florida where those bass just do not feed on the usual artificials that bass fishermen throw. Yeah, it, it is uh, the most humbling thing I think I've ever been around in tournament fishing. I've been here on Lake Okeechobee, especially after a cold front when the bite can be really, really tough on artificials. And you can see, uh, you know, people fishing on a boat that are twice my age, uh, <laughs> lobbing a, a, a big bobber with a shiner that looks like it's half dead and, and catching fish one after the other. And I use the latest and greatest with all the baits, artificials that I can. And, and literally there'll be times when you cannot get a bite and those shiner fishermen will be catching them one after the other. But I, I have to say, we've got the greatest in technology now. You see the waves changing. We've got fishermen with great new ideas and that sort of thing, someone will crack that safe and hopefully it's this week. Well, Davey, as a representative of people twice your age, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that note of confidence right there, the great Davey Hyde, with, with something new, a new tool yeah, to show us cool much more. That. Looking forward to that all season long. I think Davey had a tone of sarcasm right there for <laughs> Some of the shiner fishermen <laughs> that he's witnessed not. throughout his career. It is very humbling, well, man. Yeah, it's I'm good very humbling. Yeah. Uh, things have definitely changed um, from two days ago when I was in here, and we had that off day, and we've had different wind conditions from practice, uh, obviously different temperatures. And I think what happened is a lot of the, we had a lot of wind that pushed cleaner water out of the marsh. And this end of this area was cleaner. And then the lack of wind, a lot of that dirty water has allowed to push back in here because we don't have a hard line out there anymore to, to filter and block a lot of that. So it just kind of flows in and out. And it's hard to tell when the sun's still low, but it looks like it's gotten a little dirtier. Not too dirty where they won't bite. So I'm still kind of fishing my way through, but quickly losing confidence in this part. But it's a fairly large area. I mean, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 boats that I can see within my sight. Uh, and I think only three or four of them are, are uh, elite guys. Maybe a few more, but there's actually less elite guys here than what I thought we would see. We're gonna kind of fish through here. It should get cleaner as we move through. We're just gonna kind of take our time and go back and forth between throwing the old chatter wagon, doing a little punching. I feel like a lot of the, the people here are, you know, fishing shiners and fishing stuff out off the bank. So I came through here and practiced with a big ounce and a half weight and a X Zone Adrenaline Craw Jr. And had a not a ton of bites but it was fairly consistent punching a lot of these mats and so i thought that i may be able to come in and do that again today and get kind of to some inaccessible fish
two-time progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Brandon Palahniuk, and interesting enough, predicting himself to repeat. Yes, the, 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 you gotta Might love that. Well. I mean, that's, well. that's a, why not? Absolutely, he's uh, certainly got the tools to do it. Uh, was the uh, Bass Nation champion in 2010, and after that, joined the Bassmaster Elite Series and had has had a spectacular career. Yeah, and really one of the things he said, you know, I really look at Four now, I, I look at yes, the sir. long game for an angler of the year Wayne run. up in Okeechobee. And even though Brandon Polinick's a pretty young dude, he uh, wise by his years when you get to talk to him, especially about how he attacks the season. He said, look, man, I, I, I've got, and, and we know this, and a lot of our viewers know this, Polinick always tries to look for something out of the realm, out of the ordinary. And he said that has absolutely burned him in years past, playing it safe here today, fishing around a lot of boats, in fact, in an area that was a big player last week on the North Shore mm. in the tournament that was here. And Polinick said he's going to be around a lot of boats and just play it a lot safer this time around on Lake Okeechobee and not gamble as much. And one of the Florida staples is where you can get in a lot of trouble is running. Getting in an area, not bunkering in, you know, Florida 101, put your trolling motor down, pick it apart until it is time to go back to weigh in. And it sounded like that's exactly what you'll see a lot of the anglers on camera do today. We're certainly going to have our eyes on Brandon Polinick. We're definitely going to be a guy we're, we're going to start our season off with. Such a spectacular 2022. And we heard, we had him sit down and talk to us a little bit about what it's like to fish at this level. The cool thing about our sport, about bass fishing, is that it doesn't matter where you're at right now watching this you can make it to this level, right? There is opportunity for everybody. Doesn't matter where you're from, what your cultural upbringing is. Doesn't even matter how much money you have. There is opportunity for everyone to make it. Every guy here has a story, uh, you know, of struggle and financial problems and all of these things. But they had a dream, they wanted to make it, they had a passion. Uh, and this is a sport that actually saved a lot of guys, right? That it gave them something to hold on to and to dream about. And I know when I was eight years old, growing up in Idaho, everyone said, there's no way you're gonna fish professionally on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I pretty much dedicated my entire life to it. And so I'm a perfect example of being able to come from a place that's not known for bass fishing and being able to make it to the top level of this sport. So if I can do it, any kid out there watching right now is able to make it. Still in the first hour of our seven hours of coverage we're bringing you today on Bassmaster Live, the first stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at the legendary Lake Okeechobee. No place like it on the face of the earth. These guys will never fish a place exactly like this. So many things peculiar to this gigantic lake here in South Florida. Will Davis, wow. the rookie on top of the leaderboard, and not by a little, by a lot. 14 pounds even, that's according to Bass, uh, Bass Track, which is unofficial. Kyle Welcher, we've seen him catch big fish in Florida before, that's for sure. And all the rest of them trying to make it uh, two days and wind up in the top 50. That's how you continue on. Get yourself some good points to start the season off who usually starts his season off well in Florida is this man. It looked like a Greg rhino Hackett. feeding our hippopotamus over eating in the weeds. It did, didn't it? It's like being in Africa. It's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. But you know, I guess the deal. I ain't really seen him yet. He kind of got in some kind of got in some weeds and I couldn't uh, couldn't get him out. Number two. Number two.
Boy, you can kind of watch that. That really warms winter up seeing Hackney flipping right there. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Hackney said one of the big differences this time around on Okeechobee is a lot of times we see a lot of pound and a half fish, and then boom, you'll see a six to eight pounder. He said this time around, lack of both of those sizes and a lot of three pounders throughout practice. There are a lot of fish in this lake. Absolutely. There's no doubt yeah. about that, right? We did. Hey, listen, a, a, a tough Okeechobee, if the majority of our anglers predict over 80 pounds, that's, that's a not pretty. Bad. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's not, not bad. bad. I saw, I heard Ronnie and Kyle doing an interview with Kobe Krieger, and, and Kobe made the comment, says, you know, if anything, there may be a, a, a fewer amount of nine and ten pounders this, this well, time. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about, yeah. you, talk about uh, you know, context for yeah. predictions. Yeah. But one, one thing that was good was, I mean, we talked with Kobe in that interview about water quality, vegetation, the state of the lake. And then at the end, I touched base and asked him the state of the fish. Like, how are the, are the yeah. fish healthy? He said there were a bunch of 12 to 14 inchers. He said there were, the lake was loaded with plenty of four to seven pounders. He just hadn't seen as many nines and tens show up as big fish for the local trails as there used to be. But that, that uh, is a positive sign for the lake, for the fear that these local anglers may have, that they are catching plenty of, of those smaller growth size fish to the the normal ones you want in a bag and you just don't have those necessarily like older older nine to ten pounders how about a five and a half pounder daryl gleason just landed that oh. and got in our top ten five and a half pounder there are some anglers who just click with certain lakes and certain states and we talked to greg hackney kyle and i did in uh a couple weeks ago about fishing in Florida in February because he always seems to come out of here at the St. John's with the top 10 or one of the first two events. He's always in the top 10 in points at the end of those two events. Okeechobee's the same thing. He may This may be only his fifth BASS tournament here, but he has a second place finish back in 04. He finished 82nd in the, in the 20, 2012 um, Okeechobee event where you know, it broke 100. And then he's gotten ninth in the wild card in 2013. And then he got fifth the last time we were here yeah. in the Elite. So I'll take four previous finishes yeah. and three of them being in the top 10. I'll take that if I'm, if I'm Greg Hackney. But that's why he was on a short list for a lot of people for this event. Greg in his 23rd year with the Bassmasters. Wow. Is it that? really? Mm. Mm. Well, he took a little, as he said, a, a little time out to hitchhike across the country. Yeah, he but, did, too. But, uh, right, right. But, but other than that, 23 <laughs> years ago, he started. He was running on empty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the other thing when you look at, number one, it, it's, this is what Hackney, everybody watching, if you know Greg, this is what he does. And, and every time you come to Okeechobee, it's the... It's the same old, whether you're throwing bladed jigs or swim jigs or, or a weightless soft plastic, or you just do what Hackney does and I'm gonna lock a flipping stick. What I'm saying is, it's not a broad stroke of things you can do here. It's generally four or five different techniques in four or five different areas of the lake and they're always pretty much the, the same exact techniques. Now, speaking of tools, will anybody be actually seriously using the front-facing <clears throat> look sonar? At, look at Scott Martin. I was oh, been well, watching him the he... last five minutes. Whether he's got one that he's seeing on a bed uh, on his forward-facing sonar, but he has stared at that for five minutes. He did that at Apopka last year. We saw him well, that's swimming right. around, that's and he right. caught yep. him in the reeds on that. Seeing a lot of the usual players hit. as far as areas hit, hit, in play today, North Shore, Usually Moonshine Bay, and then South get Bay. Fishing around each other, we, get to catch them. we have one angler, one, fishing the east side of Lake Okeechobee today. Of 140. Paul, Paul Mueller more. is on somewhere on that east side. Be curious to hear. He has it exponentially to himself. There is nobody <laughs> near him. Well, that was part of his uh, key to winning. Uh, our St. John's season opener a few years back. One little place to himself. Yeah, I mean, was, I mean, what do you do? Got the bite, set the hook as hard as I could. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty much, uh, I thought it was a done deal. This is Jason Christie. Did you see that? 
That may be what I have to do. And I intentionally did that. I pitched over there and picked a backlash out and like let my bait sit. That's four, right? Yeah, I saw a little reed move like that. And I pitched over there, just slowly picked the backlash out, picked up, and he was on there. So we're gonna start letting the bait set after we pitch it in. I think Danny Brower did that once. Brandon Cobb with a five pounder. Jumps into third place, three fish for almost nine pounds. Oh, Ooh. it's time, Tommy. Oh, yes. And I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna start on the south side. Minn Kota unlocked the lake, looking down in South Bay, seeing a lot of anglers. That was a big player last week, looking at 700 miles square water here on Lake Okeechobee. You did get to see Scott Martin pretty much in an area all by himself. That was a big concern as you get up to Moonshine Bay, the monkey box up to North Shore. Our takeoff there just outside of the town of Lake Okeechobee. A lot of pressure right there just south of mm. where these anglers are and Worm Cove getting yet another throttling this week. Clark Wendelin in the middle of the lake. I don't know if that's accurate Probably right there. Yeah. Probably just running. And you see Paul Mueller oh maybe my. in a little hidey hole all by himself on the Love it. east side of Lake Okeechobee. That's 36 what... miles long, 29 miles wide, and really only about, as usual, maybe 5% of the entire lake at play here. In Minn Kota unlock the lake, Ronnie, go ahead. That's what's very interesting. I had a, some of the local guys set us up with names of areas that they thought would factor on the map, and, and I said, are we good on the east side with just a very, very, very few? And as you see, the one place that's marked on the east side, there is one boat there. Most of the fishable water that these anglers are going to be in is on that west or south end or near takeoff. So, yeah, a big fishery that's cut considerably down. Big, big. Lord of state boys. Well, we hate that. He did get it boated, though, and <laughs> we'll find out just how big. <laughs> yeah, it's just a uh, six inch soft stick worms, three sixteenths ounce weight. If you need to, if you need to get by them for, for me, that's what you pick up. June bug with a blue tail, that's about the best color that I've found down here. Really and truly, I think it's the profile. I don't think it's the color, but golly. Whew. I'm a little tore up. Now we'll try to get a weight on that one. Yeah. He obviously was shook up. He yeah. shaking like a leaf, so I'm <laughs> guessing it was a pretty decent fish. <laughs> guessing like everybody mm -hmm. else watching right there. Yeah. Boy, Scott Martin is really staring at his Boy, electronics. <laughs> and really by himself. Yeah. I mean, his contrast to just about everyone else we're looking at. Scott said that he, being a native there, living there all the time, has, gives him zero advantage except to know how the lake fishes at different water levels. But that's a lot. Which is huge. <laughs> that, that is, is a lot. 
Seriously. That is huge. On Bass Track, Brandon Lester's fish just came in as our Phoenix Boats Big Bass of the Day, a 7-0, -oh, 7 mm -hmm. pounds. Yes. Try to get that. Gives him eight and a half on the day with his second fish. Shot right there as we look at our leaderboard. Will Davis, 14 pounds on top. Couple be adding Brandon Lester to that. Couple Bethel guys right there. Will Davis and KJ Queen from yeah. Bethel University. How about that? Kyle Welcher in there. Brandon Cobb with a big one. Suits just pointed that out. John Cruz, our winner here in Florida, start the season last year. Hanging in there in the top five, and we're just getting started. Gonna move into our second hour of coverage. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. So great to open the season here in Florida. Where there are hundreds and hundreds of natural lakes, small and large, like this one. The biggest one outside the Great Lakes, pretty much, in America. That's Lake Okeechobee, and that's where we are this time around. There's your unofficial leaderboard. The rookie, Will Ooh. Davis of Alabama, on top of that leaderboard right now, comes to us from the Bass Nation Championship. KJ Queen, North Carolina in there, Kyle Welcher, Brandon Cobb, John Cruz make up our top five. We just saw Brandon Lester. Well, we saw part of his catch of a big giant one, about seven pounds plus, they figure. And there he is, top right. See Scott Martin with a appeared to be a double prop topwater bait. Brandon Lester also made the comment he thought that'd be a big player here on day number one for him. Look at the lay of the land, so many types of vegetation here. Not all of the vegetation is the type that filters water. In fact, they lose a lot of that eelgrass and such when these big storms come through, and that's kind of what a bit of the struggle is as far as the search for clear water. It's a big one, dude. Real big one. Coming to the back. Coming to the back. Oh, oh boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, baby. That's what we're talking about. Lake Okeechobee, dude. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Woo! Bass and bass. <sighs> Oh my goodness. That's good. So launches. Oh my gosh, guys. Wow. Thank you, Lord. That's for you, darling. My wife's been praying. Tell me just to settle down. I've grown up on this lake. Let me just fish comfortable. Fish like I want to fish. And that's what happens. There we go, babe. Right there. All right. There's an opportunity. I'm seeing an opportunity. Dude, what, what just happened? That was insane. Bro, bro. <laughs> I hadn't caught one on this thing all week. The secret to this bait, water temperature. In practice, we had cool mornings. They won't bite this in cool mornings. You get a warm night like we have now, they get frisky. Can't hardly beat it. There's some potential in here. Like I said, really didn't know what to expect until I got in here, but let's go. Ooh. You're alive for that whole deal. 
Oh, dude, I'm shaking, dude. That's so Tell cool. Tell a little bit more about what you're throwing. They want to hear about it. Yeah, this is just an old, <laughs> an old topwater prop bait here. Nothing fancy. There's some old timers down here in South Florida that throw a bait like this 24-7. And they catch biggins. So, like I said, water temperature, it's almost 70 degrees this morning. That's the key. In practice, it was 63. It's not the key. So, these fish, I think they're just moving into spawn because that's what they start doing. Those big ones roam around and they get real munchy. They get real, real wanting to eat stuff. And what's crazy about that bite, I mean, when it hit, I, I thought it was like a two pounder, three pounder. I wasn't sure. When it jumped the first time out there, I'm thinking like maybe it's a four and then it just got bigger, bigger and bigger. The other trick to this is real important. You see how slow I'm fishing this thing? Just letting those rings die. Both of the fish that I've caught, I knew they were about to get bit because I saw just a little movement, just a little bit, not a lot. Just a little movement of disturbance of water where that fish comes up and goes back down, comes up and goes back down. And he creates just a little boil or just a little push of water. And when that happens, you, know, you just keep working through there. Bass Pro Shops top lures right there. You'd almost think Scott's a TV show host. <laughs> it's, it's, it's eerie, isn't it? Good Just stuff like right there. Yep. Was a double slaunch splash right there with Brandon Polinick. Yeah, a good one for Brandon as well. I couldn't quite hear him. I don't think he gave us a, a guess on the weight. We've Brent. seen those devil horse style baits. We've seen them play in St. John's. And it's really mm -hmm. interesting listening to Scott talk about it, talking about the old time. We've heard a lot about the old timers here. on. Lake yes, Oak. we have. Jump I mean, this is, this is my You've day. You've lived with that <laughs> devil's horse whenever. It is glued <laughs> to your when hand. When I was a kid, right. that was the deal. I'm not kidding you. Part of the world I grew up in. Well, Brandon Polnick's fish came in as a 5-0 that we just saw. Bernie Schultz landed a 5-0 himself right about the same time. Ronnie Moore exultant, one of his picks, well, one of his... I, yeah, I can't, I can't disclose them one yet. One of his They'll can of corn those picks. The screen. Yeah, there's a couple brags in there right now. Okay, I, we are going to get to see the, the one that Brandon Lester that we sort of our signal drop out on us a little bit. Uh, I think now we've got that one refit and we, uh, we're going to take a look at that catch. Big one. Stay on, baby. Big, big, big one. Oh my gosh. God, what a bass. That is a monster. Let me get my hand in your mouth. Yeah, baby. <laughs> that right there, that's what you come to Florida for. Boom! Look at the head on that thing. That's a freaking giant, boys and girls. We're up right now, if you can't tell. What a bite. Look at the mouth on that thing. Gosh, that's a pretty fish. <laughs> I mean, she's spawned out, but she's still a dang six and a half, seven pounder. Golly. Brandon Lester said he wanted to pretty much pick off where he pick up where he left off last year in our 2022 season. Well, he started off 22 in a great way, a fun way, about 120 miles up the Kissimmee River from here, and man, having a fun day so far today. 
Zee, I talked to him in the off season. He said he spent a lot of time fishing. He fishes through the off season. He spent a lot of time learning forward facing sonar. Crappy fishing and other things that he does well, around that Tennessee, southern Tennessee region. May not see a ton of that this tournament, but no. could <laughs> be a player in a week when we head north a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very much looking forward to Seminole. I I'll tell you, watching that stuff that Davey put up, being able to real time mega live, that will be very interesting as yeah. the season. And, and when, how, when we learn how to put it, you know, <laughs> yeah. to have that in a double box will be really, really interesting. More interesting than watching somebody actually just do that. Yeah. yeah. It, it'll be vital for the northern yes. swing. Yes. Lester said, he told me that he believes somebody in the top ten every week is going to be using forward-facing sonar every wow. tournament this year. Mm. And Scott e Martin's fish e came in even, as a even, hold, on, hold on, e even Sabine, he thinks that. Hey, well, he said probably every tournament. So. Okay. I'm, I'm he not didn't specifically him. say Sabine. So you're saying suit. No, I'm just kidding. He looks to be pretty much alone here. He found a place to be left alone on Pickwick last year and notched his first elite win that way, getting to work that spot over. It's absolutely unreal what a victory for a guy who's been so consistent, what one victory can do where he doesn't miss a cut last year, gets an elite win, does well in Florida, finally breaks through there in the opens. He's, uh, he has an unbelievable, I think it's like 70% top 10 percentage in the opens. It's absolutely incredible. So to see that now, now he's wide open. And angler, your favorite every year, one of them. Yeah, the anglers chose who they think was going to be angler of the year. He was mentioned several times. Chris Johnston, of course. Tommy, I told you we were holding off on fantasy. I wanted to come in a little bit, a little bit slower. I don't want to come in so hot this year as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, over at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. But this is the time, Tommy, that we unveil some of the fantasy picks. Ah. Kind of getting set for the new season. If you did not set your lineup for this event, you missed out, but you can still play the rest of the year. Make sure you get in on Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, as well as Mercury Drain the Lake. Uh, setting up my team for the first event, it's kind of difficult. You got Everyone's at zero. You don't know if you have a lead at the end of this event or not. You do you go safe? Do you go for the win? Chris Johnston's my bucket A pick. I just have felt one of the Johnston brothers will break through in Florida uh, over the next year or two and get a victory. I think Chris Johnston's going to do pretty decent. We'll see how it goes throughout the tournament. But fishing in crowds doesn't bother him, things like that. Uh, and then we got some other guys that are kind of strategic. I think Jacob Parazink's one of the best uh, anglers at fishing shallow around the spawn. We'll see if he does well here this week. Brian Schmidt, one of the best grass fishermen. Plus, he has a ton of Okeechobee knowledge just from past tournaments here uh, across various leagues. Bernie Schultz, like you were talking about, Tommy, some of the older gentlemen, the seasoned anglers, are a lot more patient, a yep. lot more slower. When you get in an area where they're actually fish, maybe biting fish, they'll wait it out instead of running around a whole bunch. We'll see if Bernie Schultz can do that. And then I think Hank Cherry, I think last year there was a lot of classic pressure on him, uh, something that that, you know, affected his whole season, not just the classic. I think that he'll turn around as well. And then uh, for Drain the Lake, uh, this is the game mode where if you pick the guy once, you can't use him the rest of the year. So I had to be strategic. I didn't want to waste a bunch of people in this first event. So Scott Martin, I got to go with him, local favorite, as well as Kobe Krieger. Both know this lake so well. I went with two guys who are from the Mississippi River region, Caleb Kufal and Bob Downey. This kind of emulates, other than Santee Cooper maybe, closest to their home lakes and, and their area of the country. I used Jeff Gustafson here. I think he's very good and very underrated in Florida. I decided to use him here. I don't think the classic's going to line up like it was when he won there. Uh, I may hate that I didn't use him for the northern swing. We'll see about that. Frank Talley always seems to do uh, better than average in Florida, especially around big bass. And then, like I said, slow and steady wins the race. Gary Klaus, I think, will do well. And then Will Davis, he's my one rookie that I picked this week. This is a great time to use him. Wow. He is on top of the leaderboard right now. And if you want to go to Bassmaster.com and be able to sign up for Fantasy Fishing, you can do so with the QR code on your screen, and it'll take you to BassmasterFantasy.com. You can sign up and play. Prizes to win. You can fish with Mark Zona, Davey Height. You can beat me and Such and Tommy and have all the trash talk you want. But sign up and play. It's free to enter. If you're a Bass member, you have even more prizes to win uh, this season and beyond. I like the Kufal like pick. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I like I the pick. We'll see how He's doing good. 
Two I, think, I think there's a couple guys that did really well at places that were revisiting, like Kufal at Santee. Right. A lot of people are going to get sucked into picking him again. I think it's just going to be, it's a month later, it's totally different. I think that uh, I think he could do well here. What were you saying? Gus, two, two events that are Canada adjacent I events, know. and you put Gustafson in here? I know. Uh, okay. Scott Martin just Oh, I sent you a very oh. important fantasy document minutes before we came on the air yes. today. I hope you got that. Okay. Why are you doing like that? Dang. What in the world? Bro, why are you doing me like that? Scott, really? Scott Martin's big fish came in as a, a 6 0. He also has a. Almost three pounders at the heck, thirteen. Huh. Ed Lawford just finished his limit with a there five is. nine. He's up to third place. trouble connecting with one or two of them right now, but boy, he did connect a few minutes ago, as Suits just mentioned. Came in as a six-pounder oh, estimate. Let's look at that again. Okeechobee to a T from a, a lot one. of tournaments that we've covered. Coming to the back. Coming to the back. Baby, that's what we're talking about. Lake Okeechobee, dude. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that is a long spawned out one right there. All stages of the spawn yeah. going on right now. He said that. He said it'd be pre spawn, spawning, post spawn going on. It it did look like that was a pretty good one that he lost right after that giant. Yep. So all eyes pretty much this morning on Scott Martin. Yeah, we're starting to see some big ones showing up and we're at Lake Okeechobee for goodness sake. Of course that's going to happen. Having a great time getting this season underway for 2023. Be right back. Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. The thing about it is here, you're going to see a very volatile leaderboard. You'll see some guys come out of the gate with high 20s. I fully expect that, maybe even a 30 pound bag. Um, but it's going to be hard to to follow that up with consistent high 20s or 30 pound bags. So I think if a guy can catch 20, 21 a day, you're gonna be right there knocking on the door, I believe. Um, top 10 wise, mm, probably 18 a day, I'd say. That's a freaking giant, boys and girls. I'm a little tore up right now, if you can't tell. Last year's runner up, progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Brandon Lester there with a good one to get his day started. Why don't we just go right back down to this spot he's got staked out here. Well, no, he's, he's got some company. Well, he, and he's kind of on the outskirts where there's a, a lot of boats, but very methodical. A big one in the box, so we got one big bite out of the way anyway. We just got to generate some more bites. I'm starting to see more fish kind of moving around and stuff like that. So as long as we get in the right place at the right time, at, at some point today, we'll be all right.
it's easy to catch yourself when you're doing this. You gotta go so slow and pick it apart so much. You'll catch yourself wanting to speed up. And you just gotta keep telling yourself to slow down, take it easy. I mean, the thing is, I know the fish are here. You just gotta get them to buy it, so. See one moved right there. One thing that's nice to see, I, I really expected there to be 15 or 20 other boats in here this morning. Competitor boats, I mean. And there's only a couple of other guys. I can only see two other competitors, maybe three other competitors right now. So, kind of a small area in here. I knew if too many boats got in here, it'd get pretty tight pretty quick. One and two in the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year for last year, 2022, right there. And Brandon Polinick, the champion, the eventual champion, uh, we saw him. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, another big fish being caught by Scott Martin, putting a good one in the boat. Let's see if we can get another look at that. Isolated on Brandon. That's a big one. the grass and bass you want, baby. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. There you go, buddy. All the grass and bass you could ever want. Well, we, were, we were watching Scott Martin. I, I don't miss the first shot of the year. Didn't gauge it. That's a lot bigger that's than I thought it was. Yeah, that's, that's a dandy. Man owns multiple century belts, that is for sure. Put him around big ones, you know. You gotta watch him. Boy, it is really interesting watching Scott Martin right now. Definitely has one on a bed because he has stared at his front facing sonar for about 15 minutes. Tommy, you were talking about Brandon, both Brandons, Polinick and Lester, first and second AOI last year. We haven't had an Angler of the Year winner since 2019 win an event in a season. Canterbury didn't win one, Winlet, Fighter, Polinick. Just goes to show you how you can, you can win two in a year, you can have a high point. You saw Brandon Cobb win two in a year in 2019 and not win AOI. So yeah. the wins don't always translate, but just how consistent you have to be throughout a year to even get it done. Yeah. Lester in his 10th year out here. He's been a consistent guy for most of those years. Looking forward to our Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Toyota coming up from East Tennessee. So that's that may be the best week of the year, East Tennessee for fishing. So that's where he lives. He should know. That was a fun day last year with Scott Martin on Apopka. That oh, was one man. of the strangest was, days we've ever, it was, ever it was You did not know what was going to happen. <laughs> it was next. stressful for Scott, I could say that. And, 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 it was stressful for us. Yeah, and exciting too. Well, Scott Canterbury with a 5'10, gets into the, the teens. He's 14th right behind Lester. Look who's jumped in our top 10 Gerald Swindle and Hank Cherry. Mark Menendez, Jay Shakurit. Wow, beautiful aerial there from Wes Miller. Little bit of, little bit of crowd right there, Tommy. Mm-hmm. You were 
Talking about other places where that happens, right. I guess you were talking about St. Clair, yes. which we'll be going to later yeah. this year. It gets one out of crowds. Does time to time. That was the kind of the big thing. A lot of people talked about. We talked about Tommy. Is can you win in a crowd, or can you find something to yourself to win? You know, for four days. But it definitely, from the vibe of some of these anglers, they're gonna have to live in the crowd for 80 percent of their tournament, and maybe they can go to a spot or two where they can catch. They can steal one or two bass. Maybe maybe one a day, maybe two in a day, they can go to something else, but nothing primary that they're going to be able to disappear for, you know, days on wow. end without anyone being around. Look at that. Someone else's drone. Yes, indeed. Oh. It's a really nice shot. Look at all that vegetation right there and you, you often hear you know what makes a what makes a lake like this sustain all the years and years and the pressure and the beating from a lake like this to a lake like Gunnersville, the Sam Rayburns to a to a St. Clair all of them have have very very large mass if not the entire lake it is a giant flat if you look at the one connection yeah. to a lot of the best lakes in the country, they all have massive, massive spawning habitat. Get some bonus coverage coming your way now. Let's talk to Will Davis, one of our rookies out here, much celebrated man from Alabama. And Will, welcome to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Tell us of your impressions of your first day here. Uh, it's pretty exciting, you know. Very fortunate to get off to a quick start, and it's got a build on it now. I've probably got, I don't know, 16, 17 pounds. Will, we heard coming into this tournament that it was going to be very, very crowded on Lake Okeechobee. Are you experiencing that today, or predominantly left alone? Uh, predominantly left, left alone. I just wanted the boat in here. Wow. Will, how long have you been had the uh, Bassmaster Elite Series on your to-do list? How long have you been uh, planning on getting out here? I've been about eight years old. My dad, my dad owns a bait business, Davis Bait Company, and uh, I've been around in the industry since I've been able to walk. So, very uh, privileged, and thank God that I finally made it. Will, congrats on a great start, man. Tommy, Day is he number one of this is year. He your guy? Yes, I, he I is, told you he? he was. That's I, exactly I right. think I did. I, before or after, I, don't I can't remember. I don't know. But Will Davis, your unofficial tournament leader at this point right here, having a fantastic splash to start his, uh, his career in the lead series. Done very well in the state of Alabama last year for the Bass Nation through that trail and organization just to make it out of his region of the Coosa River, that area to make it to the states, to regionals, to nationals. That's a hard path, but oh boy, he man. won the Bassmaster Nation event at Smith Lake, which qualified him obviously for the championship. Goes into Pickwick, which it was fishing very tough last fall uh, towards the winter time, and was able to win that one as well. So a couple, not only just high finishes, but wins last year for Will Davis. A little more presence of a breeze with Brandon Lester, Scott Martin out of the it's an unofficial TH Marine weather watch out of the south, oh. southeast today. Like we said at the top of the broadcast, this was one of those weird practices from Super Bowl Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to where it was 80%. It was a complete washout with wind. Coming from every direction. Every direction. Yeah. And from guys we, I talked to, they either really caught him on Sunday and had a tough Scott Martin got one fighting it funny
Boys, boys, we will not be leaving the premises for a minute. <laughs> boys and girls, boys and girls. This one's for Amelia. <coughs> Amelia's at school right now. Caught one for Suzanne. This one's for Amelia. I gotta catch one for Hillary. I've gotta catch one for Reed. And I gotta catch one for Jacob. That's a good one right there, boys. That's a call. All right, I'll put this on the big side. Okay, we gotta put the wall of Skeeter up. Oh, I didn't have my GoPro on, but that's fine. Whew, okay. Dude. Bro. Come on. Bruh. That is sick, dude. <laughs> dude is bringing it, man. Absolutely. Much is made of his uh, home home field advantage here. He kind of downplayed it a little bit, but uh, it's looking like the home field advantage is working out for this guy who has spent, a, spent his life along with his dad here. Fishing this lake as many times as I have, you know, won a bunch of tournaments here over the years. But I have to say, if, if I'm able to pull off a victory here on Lake Okeechobee, a Bassmaster Elite win, a trophy, blue trophy here, uh, it, 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 would, it would rank up there with the number one thing that I've done in my career. You know, my dad's won 19 of them, so <laughs> winning one would be unbelievable, right? Am I gonna win 19 Bassmaster Elite blue trophies? Uh, I would hope so, but it's probably not gonna happen. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that record will ever be broken, just like his nine angle of the years will never be broken as well. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Big things happening, big day, kicking off the 23 Bassmaster Elite Series here at the Site One Elite. At legendary Lake Okeechobee, what a special place down here in South Florida. Kind of, kind of remote from the rest of Florida, but a beautiful, beautiful spot and a lake that is different from any other body of water these guys ever visit. Although it's a one of only nine bodies of water that have provided Century belts, 100 Absolutely. pound performances across this country. And obviously Scott Martin with a very big morning, a lot of big bass already caught this morning on Okeechobee. And boy, you look at this tournament and where we are headed next up to Seminole with the weather that is setting up for the next 10 day stretch. Mm. It's going to be about a 10 day beat down. We're going to see here on Bassmaster Live next week will be as awesome. special of a tournament as I think we're going to have all season long on the Elite Series. The last time we were at Seminole, 98.5 pounds in you a three-and-a-half-day tournament. Yes. Caught and one it was big a one on a, on a topwater, but only because it came up on my topwater and I pitched to it, you know. So. And in that event, Tommy, 97 pounds, you said, abbreviated final day. It was a big margin from first to second. I'd imagine we're going to have a lot a good more weights spot, in between. Like, it's going to be pushing up. You're going to still have, that. yeah, five okay. or six really good weights up there. Thir not just 13 pounds away. different from first to second. Yeah, it's man. seminal. Yeah, 97.10 to 84.10. Oh, boy. He's gonna help me. He might. Yeah. You know, the good, the good thing is like, so as I catch these males, I, I don't really wanna see he's peeing. I really don't wanna keep them. I want them to be a magnet to bring the females in, to be honest with you, but 
being that this, this spot's so small as I call out any of these fish, guaranteed, I mean, it's just, he's just gonna swim right over there. He's just like I threw him, threw him back, you know? So, if I was fishing big zones, big areas, it'd be a little different story. He's definitely smaller. Kind of dial in what he was just saying right there. He said he absolutely, especially, especially as small as this little hidey hole is, he said he will not have a problem throwing a lot of those males, a lot of those buck bass back in this area. He talked about that yesterday before this tournament began. He said, you don't want to unload on those males in here because that will actually halt the females from, they, they may be in here, but it'll halt them from setting up. Mm -hmm. mm. We we got some yeah. early honorifics to hand out here. Taking a look at VMC on point, majority of his damage today. Scott Martin fishing an area all by himself, anchor by. We talked about it. Going to need one or two big bites. He has those in the live well right now. A six pounder, a five pounder. They caught just minutes ago, predominantly on an old school devil's horse style bait. You'll look at a braid to what looks like a floral carbon leader and kind of watch throughout the fish catches with Scott Martin how even though those baits have a lot of treble hooks on them how he steers the bass around keeping them out of these little weed heads weed stalks we've seen them only lose one solid Thank fish you, today but with EMC on point big one. Scott Martin doing exactly what Come he wanted back. to do having a big Come day back. one and Obviously, a lot of time on the board. Very interesting that he noted earlier after catching the big one that a lot of people throw a devil's horse in Florida early in the year when it's a little cooler. Maybe that's a, a stationary top water. But he said those warm nights Come here. is when he likes to Come pick here, it up baby. the next morning. Not those we'll cool nights. He likes it when it's the warm dude. nights. And last night they've Thank had, you, they're gonna have great low temperatures the rest of the week as well. Yeah, and really one, talking about that temperature difference here, one degree in the state of Florida this time of year, so huge, really throughout practice. Had a little bit of a front so pass just, through and temps dipped around 64 to 65 oh degrees throughout wow. practice. Really Thank hovered you. in that 66 all the way up to 70 degrees this morning. Setting up perfect for a top water bite. BMC on point, Scott Martin. It'll be a good warm night again tonight. Interested to see how long Scott stays in this area, what weight he gets up to before he calls it quits. Being that he's in a region where there you'd expect boats to be, but he hasn't had any company yet. I got big one. I'm bashing around. We just gotta be able to fish a map before he gets hit. And look at that top water that Scott Martin's throwing. Heard Terry Scroggins talk about it, whether it and Cliff Prince is uh, whether that mimics a, a needlefish, but it's actually a very subtle top water. And and a lot of the bites we've seen it tournaments past. Obviously, what's going on with Scott Martin? They they kind of just roll it. They don't. It's not that summertime. Just whoosh. They kind of just roll that top water bait, and that's one of the good things because a lot of times when they roll a top water, they absolutely get it. Again, Scott Martin, your unofficial leader with 19-2, according to Bass Track.
they're just wearing them up. Uh, big old crappie. Oh, you're good. I'm, I'll go this way. I've only got one. I, I watched it. I was right over there. I said, he's bowed up way too much for that to be a crappie. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, that's, that's a lot bigger than that thing should be bowed up. It looks fun, though. Yeah. It looked, it looked like you guys were having fun. What was that? Uh, I've got one about five pounds. Need four more like it. Tommy, that boat has gotten done up in that mat. Right I was going to there. say, they're you sitting on a I gator mean? hole, I you think. just <laughs> nestled up in that mat. <laughs> they're just keep, keeping the gator yeah. hole yeah. warm. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that, uh, that is that, the definition of trenched in. <laughs> this is, the, which reminds us that, I mean, this is the top pressure time of the year yes. for Lake Okeechobee. Yes. Right, the colder it blows in Rochester, New York, the more people are launching today <laughs> very, on Okeechobee. Very well stated. Very cool to see places like Toledo Bend's been fishing great. We'll have that for the Bassmaster Opens later this year. Yeah. Okeechobee, despite everything surrounding it, has been fishing well since Thanksgiving. And it's good to see the areas that rely, the economies that rely on fishing and these lakes to do well lately. Well, Okeechobee, as you've pointed out, Ronnie, has got more water in it than it's had in several years. And we'll talk about some of the implications of that. Maybe when we get back, I'd like to talk, ask you a couple of questions about that. And we got so many more questions to answer here on day number one and really still in the first half of the day. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Lake Okeechobee, this giant shallow bowl here in South Florida, it's said to have 730 something square miles in area, maybe more than that, there's more water. Normally is here and has been for a while. They can't, uh, they can't raise and lower this place very easily. No. no, there's, no I, like the th there's not a generating dam here. Anymore. Ronnie talking about it this morning. You put one or two extra feet of water in here. That is a lot of water to deal with. Taking a look at our TH Marine weather watch. Pretty much perfect conditions today. A little bit of cloud cover. Currently 76 degrees. Going to get a little warmer. About a five degree raise, but it's the key. Key is what's going on here at night. They look at him just shining bright like a diamond right mm -hmm. there, aren't you, Scott yep. Martin? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The key really with that TH Marine weather watch is the nights. The nights are not going to get, but even though we're going to have a pretty big shift in wind, Saturday's competition, semifinal Saturday, it's going to come out of the north, northeast. 
really today, tomorrow, and Sunday, pretty stable, good conditions for Lake Okeechobee. 19.2 pound and 19 pounds two ounces, excuse me, with the estimated weight by Bass Track is for Scott Martin at this point, his leading position. Okay. And still just in the third hour of the day, so yeah, a, lot, a lot can trans Z, transpire. What do you think the uh, day one leader weight's going to be? Twenty. Well, we got some opportunities in here. D seven. I just wow. wasn't sure. I mean, you just don't know until you get in here and fish and try to understand what's going on. I, I only say I think that. Just coming in. Just really because do. we've seen Scott Martin lose a couple good ones, which you already put him at about 24. So, you know, there's good potential some of these fish that he has lost, if they're locked on or close to a nest, that he can still capitalize on them. But I, I would say mid-20s is going to be the target for today. It, it's, it's too perfect on Lake Okeechobee. Mm -hmm. We've only got about two-thirds of the field reporting any catches. You know, that's there's going to be a, a few catches that are going on that we just haven't been able to pick up on yet. So. You know, and this was the kind of stuff, Tommy, that that Such was talking about it earlier. You know, Scott Martin being, being the biggest local, knowing areas in a low water condition, knowing areas in a high water condition. That number one, that you could just get into. Okay, and like this is one of those spots. Yeah. And then if you get in that condition, that you can get in an area like this and collide with a push of fish that are moving into it. Scott Martin was the most vocal about this tournament, saying, you know, there, there's a big percentage of the bass population that we can't even get back to in this tournament. But this is one of those advantages, obviously. We talked about it earlier as an angler that's left alone, and that's exactly what you're seeing today with Scott Martin. All this extra water, it's a different, I mean, there are more places you can get to than you could in 2017, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, right. I asked Kobe Krieger that Kyle and I did on the podcast about there was a pro tournament here last week, and you got to watch it. It's public information. Does that help locals or hurt them? Because some areas were exposed, you know, in that tournament, but then you know, you can see where everyone's at. Oh, so if you have something. Oh. Oh, get out of the bushes. Get out of the bushes. Another giant, bro. Good gracious. Another big one. Coming to the back. Come here, dude. Not the prettiest landing job, but it doesn't matter. I got another one. I got another one. Another. Well, we got four days. Just got to keep rolling with it. What a, what a strike, dude. <laughs> when the stars line up and they, they start biting this, you better not put it down. Honestly, I need to throw it the rest of the day. That's a good, another good chunk right there. All right. Nice. Okay, there's my, my two, we got that one, and we got that one, and we got that one goes in there. Okay. Figure out what's going on. Whoops. Pretty easy one this morning, Tommy Sanders, taking a look at Scott Martin throwing a Devil's Horse topwater style lure is the best we can call it. Said it's an old school topwater, and pretty much Scott Martin said, when they bite that, you just come get it. Hear that, Tommy? Come yeah. get it. <laughs> exactly. You know, Michael Middleton up in the production truck likes that big time in a big way. Might be able to get that sound that we can use later. Scott Martin 
everything going right so far. He has had a couple losses. But besides obviously knowing the places to fish that you could get into in a high water condition, along with when you know they are on a certain bait, a bait that gets bigger than average bites, you're pretty much seeing home cooking 101, listening to Scott walk us through his morning. Probably the easiest power pole replay of the day Come to here, start baby. the Bassmaster Elite about. Series season. Me, Scott Mark. Thank you, darling. Power pole replay. Of Go get it. Give me one, Tommy. Go get it. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Everything going right. Scott Martin, pretty much, yep. I'm going to say, if he gets one, maybe two more calls, you will see him bail out of this little, what he calls, hidey hole. Awesome, awesome spectacle following Scott Martin today. Great start to the 2023 Bassmaster Elite. Tommy, how, what else do you want besides to start the season with a top water bite uh, with your leader? The people, the the fo the folks wanting Scott giant, Martin to win yeah, this tournament. Oh my gosh, it's, it's awesome! A perfect start. storm. Perfect powerful storm. replay. That was a long power. That's replay. a good one. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You you worthy. It. it was worth it. Go. Go get it. Scott Martin joined the Elite Series in 2021. He's been fishing Boys, opens back since 97. I fished in a tournament that he was a co-angler. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. Scott was Scott was a a lifelong co-angler for a decade. And and had said it, it absolutely helped his career. He had a great career. Did eight tour wins at FLW, including Forest Wood Open. He was one of them. One of them was here, Okeechobee. He had uh, I think eight top tens in FLW on Okeechobee. Wow. Oh. He's working on a straight flush. He's got Still a six pounder, five pounder, around. four pounder, and a couple Walking just under three. Around, I wish this wind is picking up just a little bit and they may start biting a moving bait. When I found these fish, I caught them on them. Or I got them to bite a moving bait, but they seem to be biting a whole lot better then. It's gonna be a really warm day today. That warm wind, I would think, that water temperature will spike and when that happens, Usually good things tend to happen, so it should get better as the day goes on. Lester is still stuck on the two fish, including the seven pounder. Buddy Gross just jumped into fourth place. Fifth fish was a four pounder. Scott Martin is on bass track over 20 pounds. Z, how many 20 pound bags you think we're gonna get today? Close right, to go 10? See, there's a, you're obviously seeing a lot of anglers that already have, you know, five, five to seven pound bites that are in their live well, which that's a, a huge thing for the morning on Lake Okeechobee because there's always a window in the afternoon. So I'm going to go with six, six bags over 20. Hmm. Just because if you look at those conditions right there, it dictates there's going to be more than one or two. Now, six years ago, day one, there were eight. Okay. But one was over 30. My trivia machine is broken, but how many anglers in all of last year's tournament, uh, last time, 2017's elite here, did not get a limit? How many anglers total? I say that, three, say six, that again. nine, and 12. How many did not get a limit? How many anglers? 110 anglers On were day here one. in 2000. No. The whole tournament. Is this multiple choice or is this? Yes, a... three, six, nine, or twelve. Okay. That's that's how good the fishing was. I Did not get a limit. Three? I see six over four six. days. Six. One six. There's nine. Oh, it's nine. nine. Oh, it's nine. Okay. <laughs> how do you that's break a trivia machine? Get away from there! Get away from I'm there! I'm good. He's not that big. I don't think he's gonna even help me. I don't think that's the same fish. 
have another one that was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the male. That's the male. You can see him pan. The one that hit first would look like a five pounder. Hey, Such, could I throw you some uh, unofficial trivia? Sure. Back? Tommy, Ooh, yeah. get ready now. Now, I'm actually going to call out some of our Bassmaster Live older, possible Shiner Fisherman viewers, okay, <laughs> that, that, okay, that used to watch the Bassmasters on back in the TNN days. Obviously, that catch in Little Lake Harris uh, with Larry Nixon caught it on a plastic worm, okay? What was the color? of the plastic Ooh. worm that Larry Nixon caught it on. I'd like to see if it's some of the, our friends could give Ronnie a few answers before I give that out. Because here's what's interesting. I was talking to Nixon about that fish catch. You know, the one that jumps and the, I yeah. think it was a mega bucks. The anyway. opening of the show. Yeah, yeah, opening the show, one of the best catches ever. I was talking to Larry about that last night and he knew color, the weight, that he had on Texas rig, the size of the hook, the size of the line, the speed of the reel, which, you know, every bass fisherman remembers what they were using on a big one. But it was amazing to listen to him rattle it off. He so said he, he and Tommy Martin drove around the lake for the better side of a week, buying up every single plastic worm that was this color. So you're asking, you want the fans to respond with the color of the plastic worm? Correct. Okay. From the famous catch? Not the, because he didn't even remember, he was not sure the name brand, but he definitely knew the color. It is a single color, right? Yep. Okay. Are Let, any of us wearing that Let's just color. roll the catch. I mean, <laughs> it's an honor to cover this catch while we got a, okay, here, here it is. Do, 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 Oh, my do, do, Lord. Do, 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 do. This, this is what brings kids into the living room back in circa 1984. Absolutely. Yep. Hole six. Tommy, what did that bass weigh? I think it broke 10. I think it broke 10. Absolutely did not. Six? Se it weighed 710. Oh, 710. That's what Larry said about it. What was the color? Are, 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 is it going to be revealed here to us? I, 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 Do you remember? Tommy, you give me a color. Sc uh, scuppernong? <laughs> scuppernong or, 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 or muscadine? Methylate. Methylate. I'm, I'm saying it's a tequila sunrise. Okay. Good call. Grape. <laughs> Sooch, you got half of it. Give me the rest right now. It's grape with what? You got half of it. Oh. It's it, Now, Sooch, there's really only one combination to go with that. There's several, but <laughs> there's one black, key one. So you got half of it, baby. Don't lock up on me now, Sue. Oh, yeah. Gra grape jelly? Grape uh, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly? <laughs> no. Grape? There it is. Chartreuse tail. Chartreuse tail. Oh. Sue, that was great. I can't see it on the, vi on the Very monitor. Very impressive. <laughs> that was awesome. the color of the day, though. The it was a grape chartreuse tail worm, 3 16 ounce weight oh, totally with 14 man. pound green trilling XT line. Awesome catch. Fun fact, I took this video of this catch and shared it at the 50th Bassmaster Classic back in 2020 to a couple of the angler, anglers we interview each evening after a competition to see if they could recognize what tournament, who it was, and what, what lake it was at. A lot of people was like, that's a young Larry Nixon. I don't know it's which Florida lake it was, but it's they, very, they love it. Very interesting hook set, too. Very <laughs> interesting hook set. <laughs> But absolutely, I, I, you can. Kevin Van Dam made a comment a long, long while back. He said, "What is one trait you could steal from another professional angler?" He said, "The patience and the knowledge of Larry Nixon fishing a plastic worm." Hard to argue with that. Larry left the Bassmasters after the 2006 Classic. 
yep. has not fished the Bassmaster right. since, since then. That was a big still, turning point. Right. He's had yeah. 262. This is his 263rd tournament. Wow. And I think when he became a Bass Millionaire, it was after that Mega Bucks in 88. He, he did it in 92, I believe. But he was 90 or 92. He was the first angler to win $1 million yep. at BASS. Awesome, awesome fisherman from Arkansas, no doubt. Yep. Our buddy Steve Bowman will remind us he's still got every dollar he ever won. <laughs> million <laughs> as well. Yes. <laughs> Which is good. Bowman. Larry Nixon, we celebrate the general on his return to the Bassmasters. His first start with the Bassmaster Elite Series happening today on Lake Okeechobee. Day one continues on when we come back. Yeah! Hook order! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Back out on the lake, let's get you out to Scott Martin. That is live shot right wow. there. Another good chunky keeper for the man leading this Dude. tournament. Bro. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh my God, what a fish. That's a beautiful bass. That's a lake bass right there. Old bandito bug. She catches big ones too. Dude. Mm. We gotta start thinking about management at this point. Dude, the second I heard that, I was like, uh oh. Didn't miss that one. No. Oh, that's freaking good. I don't know where my little balls got stuck in the overflow. Yeah, dude, that's another five, bro. Another five. Okay, we're letting go of two. Yeah. That's a what, a five, what are you, five, five pounds? Four and a half. Just say four and a half. Yeah. Whoop. Skeeter Boats, big fish alert. Jamie Hartman, six pound, 11 ounces, second to Brandon Lester, 7 0. We got another angler just made a move. All his fish came in at once. Tyler Rivet, second place with 19 pounds. He's got a five and a five six in his five fish. Wow. I think you're about one call away listening to Scott Martin right there from him bailing out of this. He's, he's going to oh. shut down this little shangri Which sucks. Isn't he? Yeah. It, it <laughs> no, does. we want to see more. It absolutely yeah. does. Hey, and watch out. Drew Cook ties Brandon Lester with a seven pounder. He's in fourth place right now with 16 even. Oh. Oof. Yeah, there's enough big ones being caught besides Scott Martin that there are going to be multiple. Multiple bags over 20 today. I say we do. I say the whole top 10. Okay. The entire top 10. Hmm. Not. I don't disagree with that. Martin's last fish went in as a four-pound nine ounce. He's up to 22.5. What we got over here. Well, let's take a look. We need to take a look at a guy who is known for making a splashy start to the season. Here in the state of Florida, that's the one and only Mark Menendez. And Mark, tell us what's been what's been happening out on the water for you today. Well, Tommy, we got off to a quick start, and I'm throwing back a decent little low fish right there. And um, this was just a starting spot to get me a few fish, but they've been a little bigger than what I anticipated. And I put an awfully nice three and a half, three and three quarter pound in there just a minute ago. So uh, I'm off to a better start than I thought. I'm going to leave here in a few minutes and take off and go to where the really big ones live, I hope. So that's the plan right there anyway. Mark, with the weather that we had in practice, massive, massive winds, very, very hard to get around, not ideal Florida, Lake Okeechobee conditions. How was your pra how, how was it coming into this tournament after the weather situation we had? Well, it's just fine and clean water, Mark, and there's not much of it. That's the real problem is, is not around a lot of clean water. And it, it, it chopped the lake up even more. So with that having been said, um, my practice is about what I expected. A typical Okeechobee practice for me, and I'm thrilled to have 13 pounds a day for me. That's good for me. Uh, and that's about what I caught on my best day. So 
Um, I never have connected with any big ones, but that can change in two casts, you know. Mark, tell, tell us, tell everybody watching Bassmaster Live, tell us about this really, really big fish area that you're heading to in a little bit. Well, I mean, it, I'm going to the parking lot, Mark. There's the whole tournament field is down there. It's the biggest clear water area. It's down on south end of the lake. And I'm just going to get in there and slow down even slower than most of them are and just peck it apart and hope I drop it in front of a big one. And that's how whoever leads this at the end of the day is going to have done it. They're going to put it over across a couple of good ones face they ate it and go from there the way i'm sitting right now i've got that good base limit that 13 pounds of base limit so you put a five on there and you, you bump her on up there to about 16 and then you put another five on there and you're at 19 or 20 so i'm working on a decent okeechobee day let's hope Mark Menendez, thanks so much. Now we feel like the season's really started. We visited with you. You're catching yes. them big time, and that's that's the way it works out here the past few years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. It always tends to come out of the gates firing whenever oh, we're in the yeah. state of Florida to start the season. Only thing missing was a couple cypress trees in the background yeah. that we're accustomed to seeing. Come get it. <laughs> well, that was that was not me. That was, <laughs> Come get it. <laughs> that is the production truck all day long, which we need to just add that into a lot of our sponsor elements. Oh, uh, oh, all, absolutely, all. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we could time those in on the topwater bites on the close-ups. <laughs> That's that's a that's a big ask. Maybe you could do it though. Jason Christie, our classic champ, caught the first fish that we were aware of today. He, absolutely thrilled when I sent him the promo that he was going to be on live, and here's the here's the times and whatever. He said, "I said good luck," and he said, "I'm going to need it in all caps." And so, I think his assessment this morning, talking about he wasn't, he never really found a place that he had any kind of confidence in, uh, was was true. An interesting thing that Hackney said, t looking, talking about Jason Christie, Hackney made the comment he saw Jason Christie more in practice this week than any other events combined throughout was, the years. And what you was he think, implying by that? <laughs> I, I don't know, but, I, but I, I, you would think the way Jason Christie fishes, the way Greg Hackney fishes, um, that they would bump into each other a Constantly. lot. Oh, yeah. And Hackney said, no, we actually don't, even though we have had them frighteningly close on maps at times. Um, Hackney said, he goes, man, I've seen Jason Christie what seemed like every other hour wow. in practice this week. And that's what's interesting is there are some guys who fish similar and see each other frequently and some guys who fish similar who never do. And I think Matt Heron spoke about that. He, Matt Heron either never sees Hackney or always sees Hackney, but like when Tommy Biffle was on the Elite Series, they they never saw Tom. You know, like just hmm. they dissect it differently. So that's interesting. They've seen each other quite a bit this week. Lots of changes in the top ten. Jay Shakur at six pounder, he's jumped up to fifth. Scott Canterbury just had another nice fish to go along with his five ten. He's up to thirteen pounds, sixth place. Menendez just tied him. Didn't look at Hackney down there, kind of. Getting a little itchy, scratchy. Like I did those first ones. Really good teeth marks. That's the way you're going a bit in practice too. I mean, it's. I think it just just shocks them. You know, it, it falls so fast. They just they're either going to get it or run.
shiner fisherman, elite fisherman. We got it all today. The good thing is I have skin like that. That is so. Barely hooked. One five. Five will put Christy in the top 15, but just outside the top 10. Three, four, five. That first one wasn't a bass, it was a gar. Top water, you want to throw it downwind. Keeps it in the strike zone. If I throw it that way, I will occasionally just based on boat position, but I want to keep it there. It keeps blowing it into the spot. That's important. Otherwise, your bait is moving a little fast. You'll notice Steve Kennedy has just jumped up to fifth place. He's got our Phoenix Boats Big Bass, a 7-2. That's Tommy Sanders' fist pumps on the left side of the desk. His total is 14 pounds, 6 ounce on bass track. He's got a, several one-pounders. And Christy was 42nd here back in 2017, the last time the elites were here. Best Florida finish is a eighth place at the St. John's the year before that. into our fourth hour here. It's going by fast this very first day. They all go by so quickly, but this day just as important as any other day. We always say that any other day of the year on the Bassmaster Elite Series, they all count. And these guys are trying to make a cut tomorrow. We'll be right back. Yeah! Hook order! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Welcome back to day one coverage here at Lake Okeechobee as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. Over at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, I wanted to address something that Scott Martin mentioned in his column earlier this week talking about Lake Okeechobee, that they're never in the same exact place they are in previous years, how much it can possibly change. We talked about this fact with Seth Fighter at Mille Lacs. He says those boulders, they don't move. If I know they're on one set of boulders, they could be on another and I could follow that pattern. But on grass lakes, that's much different. I wanted to paint that visual, guys, at the monitor. 
With 2015, this was just, I wanted to get a sample of a couple years ago and, and how it's transpired, but this is a prominent area at Lake Okeechobee, and this is what it looked like in November of 2015 from the aerial view. That same aerial view in 2019, you can see how much the vegeta vegetation had changed in that area, whether it's high water, floods, uh, hurricanes, spraying, whatever it could be, it is affected. And now we take another fast forward three more years to January of 2022 and how it is cleared out in some of these areas. So places that, you know, maybe were a haven in 2015, that they had sweet spots, that there was plenty of cover for these fish, it now conceals them uh, down or it, it funnels them down to certain areas to now, this is what some of the cover they have. So when you find an area that's got good productive water, the only cover that may be nearby is an island or a reed head or something like that. It might hold a lot more fish than it has in previous years because this is the only place that they have to go. So that's kind of the aerial visual of some of these areas that we're seeing a lot of anglers condense into. Where there is good quality water and vegetation, we will find the bass and the fishermen. Scott Martin hooked up. Yeah. Uh, he's not thought he's bigger. It's a good one, but he's not gonna, not gonna help Those me. Those are not bass he wants to be catching in here right See, now. See, what's great about, great about this spot is we're not catching 12 inches. You're catching good quality lake fish like that. When you're catching good quality lake fish, then big giant mamas snuggle up in here with them. It's funny, actually, that your first fish really was I know. Uh. Drew Cook has joined oh, Martin over 20 pounds. Wait, wait, he caught he a seven, six pounder after set seven. up on him. As we say, the day is going by very, very fast when they're catching them. That is the case every time. So let's uh, dive right into our Yamaha midday report right now. One of the big catches we saw earlier today was this one from our defending progressive AOI angler of the year, Brandon Polinick. Exactly right, Tommy. Brandon Polinick not getting a lot of bites. Definitely starting the day outright said he was not going to overthink it this time around on Lake Okeechobee, getting the mix with a lot of boats. Okay. Has one great big one in the live well, just needs to start backing it up with some solid fish like we got to see Scott Martin just throw back. Mm -hmm. Head just south of Brandon Polinick. Very, very popular area of Lake Okeechobee in the history of Lake Okeechobee. Last week, this week, Brandon Lester with a giant to start off his 2023 Elite Series season. Man, he says big, he big. loves to just slow down and just absolutely dredge an area. Doesn't like the, the oh turn and burn, or whatever the, the term he was in Such's article. And Brandon Lester, like so many times that we've been to Florida, waiting on the push, waiting on the come oh, to oh happen. Ass. Throughout practice, he got one that bite in this little walk. stretch early on Monday. Tuesday Let evening went through the same that. stretch and got about a dozen yeah, really <laughs> big bites. Here's a big yeah, one. Right there. Brandon Lester's That's live well. And like we said, Brandon Lester kind of fishing outside of the pack of boats on, on the west side, side of the lake. One giant in his live well, definitely there. picking up where he left off the 2022 Bassmaster season. According to Bass Track, he still lacks one more to make a limit, so Lester's got room to grow. He's hanging in there in the top 20. Let's get over to Scott Martin. He's been the man today. Yeah, Scott Martin with a big, big morning. Very calm conditions. And what a big one. Scott Martin putting on a show with the top water bait, Devil's Horse style, Who's old that? school, double prop top water bait, braid to what looks like a short fluorocarbon leader. You've seen him with a couple losses, but every single real giant bass that he has put in his live room. We think we have him at unofficially 22 and almost a half here, pound. Baby. I'm going to say he's kind of better than that. Taking a look at what he has in his live well, really only 
one decent fish to call out, and he will have a mega bag here on Lake Okeechobee. And obviously not a big, big area, but you keep hearing Scott Martin make the comment, there are lake fish coming to me. So he went through this area late in practice and was very concerned. You get one, maybe two boats in this general little pocket that he's in, said it would not sustain, but really felt like if he had it to himself, he could definitely get two or three days out of this. Boys, boys, we will not be leaving the premises for a minute. <laughs> Dude, give me some. Bro. <laughs> Dude. Mm. It's a heck of a morning. A lot of pressure for, on Scott Martin for, this week. Here's the best way yeah. to put it for everybody talking about how good the late afternoon bite should be. Scott Martin definitely in the driver's seat oh, right no now. No doubt. And you With, say you say one keeper away from leaving I, this. I'd place. say he's one keeper away okay. from getting the heck out of All that right. little hidey hole. <laughs> And that's the one thing we'll see, say and see on the Bass Track leaderboard. Guys are checking in at 5 p.m. Eastern time. The last flight checks in at 5 Eastern time. So the fact is, some of these guys will have a lot of that afternoon bite. Hmm. Holy cow. Yes. Come here, dude. Real biggin'. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Holy crap. That looked like Larry Nixon deal. Oh my gosh, stop it, dude. Bro, please. Oh my gosh. It's a freaking eight pounder. That's what we need. Oh my gosh, you were so strong, bro. I need a net. I need a net, bro. I need a net. I don't need a net! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Zona. I don't need a net, bro. Oh my gosh! Whoo! Man! That... Oof. That's where I lost a fish earlier. I lost that fish earlier. I don't think I'd lose that one. That was a little magnet. Oh my gosh, look at the thing as long as my leg, bro. Hillary, that one's for you, darling. That's a Hillary bass right there. Oh my gosh, what a fight, dude. What a fight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank wow. you, everything. Thank you, everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would say. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. The Lord's blessed me a bunch, man. That's, uh, I mean, I'm not perfect by any means, but I tell you what, he's blessing me, so thank you. I know it's a lot of people praying. My wife's been diligent, my family. Just gotta keep it going. We've got potential. 
we have potential. I don't even know what to do now. I don't even know what to do now, bro. I don't even know what to do now. Could go to the tiki bar and get a little, get a little lunch. <laughs> go see my mama. I gotta catch one for my mom. We can't get out here to catch one for her. I love you, mama. <sighs> My mom's been going through some stuff. <clears throat> and she's my biggest fan. <sighs> I just want to catch a big one for her. Love you, Mama. <clears throat> All right. I don't think I need to put this thing down for a little bit. Dude, that thing train wrecked it. What a fight. <sighs> what a start to the Bassmaster season and Bassmaster Live, man. Holy cow. Did I hear him say thank you everything? <laughs> yeah. I think he Multiple did say times. that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he That's thanked awesome. everything twice. What a show this morning. It's a way to man. do it. Unbelievable. This guy had some pressure on him to Absolutely. perform here. You know? Absolutely. And he's, but he's, you can, he is I, more than Tommy, I walked in this studio yesterday. I said, I think we're going to be in good shape. You did. You, you you talked to him and, and you said he had that he, he had, had, a, that, he had uh, a tone. attitude in his he tone. A, yeah, tone is the word. He had a tone. Yeah. Um, and said some other things about this spot, but obviously knew, you know, and, and again, it really goes to the whole equation of Such talking about and Ronnie earlier today, him knowing where he could go and get into in high water where potentially a lot of the, the rest of, obvious, not a yeah. lot of, the rest of the field did not know about, obviously not a big area by any stretch of the imagination, but the right ones you hear Scott Martin talk about it a lot of giant lake fish but there is way more fish in there than I thought there when it started I thought all right it's a it's a solid it is choked with big ones you saw the comparison that he netted about five pounds out of that didn't he wouldn't you say four? all I'm gonna say is I think I said 27 pounds which I'm feeling hey, good yeah I'm feeling good. <laughs> oh, I think he's sure. over that the smallest, the smallest right was there. close to three just under three and then that one what I mean probably at least day, three man. or so Good for him. Oh, unbelievable Good start to him. the season, as you put it right there, Marzano. What a great, great start by Scott Martin. Scott Martin, the favorite, the local favorite, going in hands down. It's not always a, a great place to be, but boy, it's been a great place to be and a great day to be with Scott Martin, watching all this happen on Bassmaster Live. Drew Cook pulling up behind him. Drew Cook, who should do well at the next one and the next one as well. Tyler Rivette, Cody Huff, and Will Davis rounding out our top five right now. Well, we got to, coming up. We're going to we're going to step back a little bit and let you watch some uh, some uh, co some continued coverage. And later, Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer, Davey Height will come your way. So stay around for that. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Well, it hasn't been great. I mean, we got five. Uh, we got no big ones. Um, honestly, I was pretty concerned about um, settling down today and, and with the early boat draw, 
Um, I almost just got to stay here. The other area that I wanted to check is 20 miles from here, and I don't even know that it's cleared up enough. I mean, I think the best bet for me today is just to lock in where I'm at and uh, <clears throat> just hope that there's some females that move in throughout the day or, you know, I figure out a way to catch them better than what I'm catching them so far. I mean, it. I fish down here enough to know that when there's fish around, there's, there's fish around. It's just getting them, you know, to set up right and stuff. Uh, the worst thing that you can do unless you just, you know, got a lot of confidence in other areas, which I don't, the worst thing that you can do is start running around crazy. And I just, uh, tomorrow I'll have a late boat number and I'll learn a lot more. I mean, I only made one quick pass through here in practice. I'll learn a lot more about this area today. You know, this is a, this is a four day event. It's not a one day event. Um, and especially in Florida, you know, the weights really tend to, to shift. So it's not like if I, you know, don't come in with 20 or 30, that I'm out of it. I just got to learn something every day and you know what uh, the plan kind of move fast but I can't there's just too many people I mean we got several of our guys in here we got several locals in here spinning around and and you just can't move fast because I get up on somebody you know and there's it's not like you're gonna catch them all there's just so much stuff I mean I could literally sit right here with the poles down and fish for 30 minutes. Uh, and I can't do that, but I mean, I could if I wanted to. So I think we're, we're gonna hang out here for a while. One bite changes, changes the outlook. I mean, it takes a six or seven pounder to really, to move my weight. But also it, more than that, it would just, it would give me a lot more confidence. Even though I know there's big ones swimming in here. Uh, you know, proof is for him to go in the live well and or at least me see one. We off.
What's that beeping? My battery. Okay. Didn't know if that was my camera or. I know there's fish that are spawning around here. Unless, yeah, I just haven't been able to get uh, get anything going. I mean, I saw fish getting caught around us. Uh, you know, even fish coming out of mats. But for whatever reason, we've just not been able to get things dialed in today so we made a little move down the lake to an area that I figured wouldn't really have much pressure and it doesn't <laughs> there's not really anybody down here but I don't know if someone already came through and fished these because really the only fishable water is kind of these little isolated cattail patches and there were fish spawning on them the first day of practice but that was, you know, a few days ago, four days ago or whatever. And you would think with the weather, or at least what I thought was that the warmer weather was just going to push more fish to these, you know, where I got, I didn't get bit on every one. I figured I could come back and maybe get bit on new ones or something. But I've not been able to get a bite on one yet which is really shocking to me.
<clears throat> well, we got one big one and four little peep, pip squeaks that we got to get rid of, but we still got plenty of time to do it. I'm just kind of pecking around in here, fishing some new stuff that I hadn't fished that kind of sets up the same way. Several more competitors in here now. There's probably, I don't know, seven or eight tournament boats in here. So I'm just kind of trying to watch what's getting fished, watch what's not getting fished. And this stretch right here is still in the same area where I've been catching them all morning, but it's on a different side. Nobody's really fished down through here. So we'll give this a try for a few minutes and hopefully hook into another one of them big hog heads. That's what we need. Sun's over here, shadows being pushed back. They would literally have to be way back there. Or we would have to move the tent, move the tent back. It's completely good. I promise you, it's fine. Yeah. Well, so it's also just sitting underneath the hot sun all day. When this breaks and it's done, we'll get a new one. We'll get a white one. Dang it. Still struggling. I had a bite there a minute ago and lost him, but hung up on two bass.
Everybody at home watching me today is bored to death. Yep. Well, I'm having the time of my life being back at Bass, to be honest with you. And even though I'm not having a good day on the water, the place that I began my career with and back fished here for 29 years. And, you know, to me, it's the, uh, it's the place I need to retire, I'll put it that way. And I'm not saying I'm retiring, it's just that I'm glad I could come back with bass and have the opportunity to finish my career here. Probably the biggest thing is the live TV and, uh, you know, cameras in the boats and uh, the opportunities to show fans what they're fishing and how they're fishing. And uh, it's, it's really changed the sport. We had a little bit of it back in the early days in the Megabucks tournaments, but not the full-fledged uh, TV coverage like they've got now with Fox. and. Uh, so, you know, to me, that's the biggest change. I was wanting to catch me a big stringer today, just to by golly, but say the first day back, I caught a big stringer, but now I'm, I don't know whether I can pull one off or not. I still got plenty of time. I really think in my mind that they just ain't, they just ain't turned on yet. Plus, there's already been so many boats through here this morning that I know that I know how that does fish. But when they're not biting, usually when they turn back on, it doesn't matter how many boats has been through here. It's just that Florida bass are crazy. I mean, when they start, they start. Come on, baby. Here he is, right there.
The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. I just know that if I keep pitching this jig around, that one sounded big. Yeah. No, that's Hackney. Three thirty. All right. Yeah, it's it's been a decent morning. I mean, we got one big one and four little babies, but that's typical Florida fishing. You know, I, I hadn't got as many bites as I had hoped, but uh, it's been okay. I'm going to fish around in here for maybe another 45 minutes to an hour, and then I've got another area that we're gonna go check out this afternoon. It's got a lot of fish in it, but it's gonna have a lot of boats in it too, I feel like, but um, 
I feel like this afternoon the fishing is going to be better than it has been this morning. I, I really was hoping it was going to be good this morning, but it, it didn't seem to be that great. I mean, as far as, you know, getting fish to bite, I really expected to be able to catch some on top water this morning and maybe winding around a, a swimming worm or something like that, and I just never was able to get that going. I keep picking up a, I'm throwing a swim jig right now just because the wind's picked up a little bit, trying to get them to react, but it seems like I, I can't really get them to react, and I'm not really seeing that many fish chasing or, you know, blowing up in the pads or anything like that. So it's kind of tough, but we'll just keep pecking around. I mean, here's the deal. We need one more of them big ones. We'll have survived two more of them big ones, and it's a good day, so. I mean, we're only a couple of bites away from a really good bag of fish. I don't think he was big. Give us a give us an update on today. Well, I've got him. It's a little one there. I mean, look, 20, I don't know, 25 pounds, 26 pounds. I don't know what I have exactly, but it's, it's what I needed, that's for sure. You know, we gotta do this a couple more days in a row, four days in a row, three more days. But, um, you know, I'm liking what I have so far. You know, I'm liking the fact that at this point I don't have any pressure. So, we'll see. There's um, not a lot of water in here, but there's a lot of fish, so. I think it's protected for all the wind that we're gonna be having, different winds and stuff. So I think we're okay with that as far as water clarity goes. So I need to make a decision here in a little bit. I don't wanna catch a whole bunch of three pounders or you know fours, but I, I really think I can get an eight or a nine pounder. I just feel it. And so if I can get that, I'm probably gonna stop fishing at, at, at that point. Um, or maybe get another seven or something like that. I think that's good enough, but I gotta think about managing this area. Red alert. Boy, that was, I had, I had a, about a three pounder, two and a half pounder hit it, missed it. Threw back in there and a little tiny one got it. It was a different one. But I don't really I don't really want to catch that one to be honest with you. Golly. Things are crazy, dude. How do they hit this thing and not get hooks in their mouth? I don't think he's big. I think he's just a three pounder. I don't think he's that big.
Nothing new moving in. I really just thought there'd be more, more fish would move in here. This looks a lot similar, you know, there just, there wasn't a lot of mats and grass and stuff to move around with the wind. So watercolor looks really similar. And I mean, water temp's a little warmer, but that should be better. I don't, I can't make sense of what's happening. It's just an area thing. Because I'm sure there's guys that are just crushing them. We will see that when we get to weigh-ins this evening. There will be some big bags caught today. I feel like I'm fishing good. I'm just not getting bit. What? I think to win, you need to be over 20 every day, or at least average that, you know, somewhere, somewhere in that 22-ish range, I think will get it done. I think 13 or 13 and a half is going to be the cut weight after a couple of days. I could be way wrong when we get back this evening, but that's my guess. Must have been a gar. Didn't feel right. Well, it's gotten pretty slow for me. I mean, I've only had five or seven bites and boated five of them. You know, and one of the reasons I don't like fishing around people is, you know, you just, you see and you hear what's going on. And, you know, it seems like I'm the only one that's not catching them. And it makes you start questioning what you're doing. But I just, I mean, I got, I'm just not getting very many bites. And, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna keep flipping and we see something, you know, in the right area or something, I'll throw a frog or something like that, but I think my best chance to catch a big one is just to flip, 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 flip. The best part of the day is still coming. You know, you just gotta be, 
You gotta be on your good stuff, which I don't have any good stuff, I'm just fishing. But you gotta be around them when they go to biting. Keep looking down and seeing those tilapia sunning and Finally. Seems like every time I go on camera, I catch one. We need to go on camera more often. I don't know that he's gonna help, but. He's not bigger, uh, he might be close to blue. Well, didn't help. Still just doing the same old thing. Make sure these two over here uh, can't get them figured out or can't find them or they ain't started or something. I really just don't know. Kind of unusual one. You've had as many bites as I had in practice that something just don't start clicking. Painful, making me wait. Well, I've had five bites all day, lost one, lost two, well, lost two and missed one. And I mean, that's been it. Driving me crazy. Well, I'm still here, you know. That's basically about all I can say. I've been here all day. I'll, I'm gonna try to be here all week. <laughs> That's about all I got going on. It, uh, I've actually had, you know, plenty of bites. I haven't fished real clean today, but 
uh, we're going to overcome that issue issue and uh, I'm, I'll be honest with you I'm probably just going every couple hours change do something different until I really figure out you know the way to generate five big ones I'm hoping it's what I'm doing right now but I don't know this is the way they were but it's a lot of fish been a lot of fish caught I've got to see a lot of fish ca ca caught this today and uh, So the area's been good. Really, the, I thought I saw Queen catch a good one this morning, and I saw Buddy catch a, a big one. You know, everybody else, I hear them setting a the hook, and reeling in a lot of the same size fish, but they could all have caught big ones. I don't, you know. That's really the name of the game in Florida. It's, it's never catching fish. You know, it's always just figuring out how to generate the bigger bites. Typically, for me personally, it's never getting a lot of bites. Like. It's never a deal where, for me here, that fishing through them and catching a big one. It's typically doing the right thing and, you know. But this is kind of a different situation because the weather has been so warm here so long, you know, so, I mean, it really feels like, <laughs> I mean, realistically, there should be lots of post pond fish. Ah, dang it. That's a good one. Uh, I needed that one. I mean, you just gonna lose some fishing like this, you know? I, mean, I hate it. It is what it is. You just gotta hope they get hooked deep down in the mouth, because what happens is, like that when I pulled it to the top, my hook's hung, and then they just flop around and tear the hook out. Like that last one I caught. The hook was down in its mouth, so you can reel them through that stuff. Like that one I reeled up in the reeds, when that hook's sticking out, it catches on the way out. get away from him. He was on the other side. I was like, well, we'll come around here. And he, I don't really, I think it's all the same. I don't really, it doesn't really matter where I fish at. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Oh, this is really, really happening. After months of abandonment, that's right, the Bassmaster Elite Series is back in your life. And what better way to kick off 2023 than one of the most fabled fisheries on the planet, Lake Okeechobee. And while we're talking about fabled fisheries, let's talk about a fabled family. Scott Martin atop the leaderboard with 26 pounds and an ounce. I'm joined by the Hall of Famer, Davey Height. When you look at that leaderboard, I mean, Scott Martin was a 
pick going into this, but to do it on your home body of water is so, so tough. Speaking of that home body of water, tell me about Lake Okeechobee, Davey. Hey. Well, Lake Okeechobee is over 700 square miles of fishable water, but unfortunately this week it doesn't seem to be uh, nearly that big. But we're right here at Scott Driver Park on the north end of Lake Okeechobee. Uh, Great fishery, great fishery, beautiful weather. The days are warm and the nights are nice and warm. I think we'll have fish coming up throughout the week. It's going to be very interesting, but not surprising, like you said, to see Scott Martin on top of the leaderboard here this morning. That, what you just said, said, you know, it doesn't seem as big as it normally is. Why do we always hear that about Okeechobee? Well, it all depends on clear water, water clarity and where those fish spread out from. And, and you know, there's a lot of talk, uh, Zona talked this morning about it a little bit. He and I, and he had talked to Scott Martin and Kobe Krieger, some people that have been here for many, many years, Ber uh, Bernie Schultz. Um, you know, there's lake fish and then there's fish that live in that clear water around the edges. Those lake fish, for some reason, are very, very hard to catch. Um, but if you can crack that safe, so to speak, and figure out how to catch some of those fish offshore. And I saw some anglers doing that then it could be one like that. Other than that, most of the time when you come here to Lake Okeechobee, you search for that clearer water, the good diverse vegetation where you've got a mixture of different kinds of vegetations, cattail, reeds, hydrilla, a little hyacinths, that sort of thing. That's what you look for. Unfortunately, when you find that right now at Lake Okeechobee, you find about 40 other bass fishermen. Well... It's been five months. I mean, Michael, our producer, has not talked to either of us in five months, but he's telling me in my ear it is time for the Toyota Midday Report, and let's start it with a generational angling icon, Scott Martin. Yeah, it's just really incredible to see Scott Martin and, and, and watching him this morning, how excited he is. He's accomplished, you know, one of the one of the greatest anglers in our sports. You have to look at his history over the last 20 years. He's, he's had so many wins. He's had big wins, and to... To lead here on day one at Lake Okeechobee is very, very special for him. You could tell that in his mannerisms, how excited he was. You know, he's caught a thousand fish just like this from this exact same lake. But that particular one, absolutely amazing for Scott Martin. He's got about a five, a six, and then this might be the eight-pounder. He caught about an eight-pounder. Fishing a top water lure, a double prop, like an X-prop type lure. I don't know the exact mate, probably homemade. Uh, we'll find out more about that tonight from Scott. But not surprising to see him doing well. Oh, let's join our reigning and defending progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. And I'm going to throw it out here right now and upset the rest of the elite field. I say he's going back to back this year. Well, he has to have a decent finish here. If you remember, this has kind of been a very difficult place. And there's not many places throughout the country that Brandon Polnick <sighs> seems to struggle sometimes. But it has been right here in South Florida, especially Lake Okeechobee. I heard him say before the tournament started, I just don't need to try to make things too crazy. I just need to go in there. And if you... You look around when he catches this good five pounder this morning, other boats in the area. I think he's tried to find, uncrack that safe, or crack that safe, like I said earlier, and it's very, very hard to do. I think Brandon Polnick, he doesn't usually fish like this. He usually fishes to win, not only angler year, but each and every tournament. But I think he's playing it a little more conservative, not afraid to be around some boats here this week. Over to. A guy who literally came one bite away from beating Polnick for that progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race, and that is Brandon Lester. A lot of people saying this is going to be his year, and he doesn't have a hard time in Florida. He, he does it, and we've all been waiting for Brandon Lester to win an Angler of the Year or a Bassmaster Classic, and everyone is saying it's his time, it's his time. And it's great to have a camera with him along with Brandon Polnick here this morning. And Scott Martin, I mean, we've got great, great anglers on, on camera here this morning. You see here Brandon Lester catching this fish. He loves to fish Florida. He does very, very well here. Unlike some of the other anglers, including myself back in the day, he loves to fish very, very slowly. He likes to settle down, fish a worm. You know, we, he's very diverse, fishes a lot of other baits, but he loves yeah, to fish baby. in Florida. He's had a lot of success down here, right fishing slow That's with soft plastics, and you look at that. That's the way to get it going. The thing that's exciting about this afternoon, a lot of the anglers Look said in practice, hey, it was a lot thing. better in the afternoon than the mornings for us. That's a freaking job. Brendan Lester freaking kicked job. off that incredible season last year that had two wins, but kicked it off right here in the state of Florida with that open win. Said it gave him the confidence to fish free, and man, what a season he had. Only Elite Series angler to cash a check in every tournament last year. And Brendan Polnick, please the golden there. child, is hooked up. Oh, my God. Live, live right now. Perfect timing, Brandon. Oh. Really good fish, you look like. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. See a little bit of wind there. They did not have that this morning. 
Please stay on there. Should see some moving Please baits come into play a little more this afternoon. Come on, come on. All that's important, on, but you should on. know he's got a new color yes. scheme on his boat, Davey. Idaho dust yes. storm. Wow. And it's working. Oh, that was a surprise. Vibrating jig, certainly not a surprise. I was hauling, trying to get over to another area. It's another good one. Oh. Got two of the right bites. <laughs> Man. Idaho okay. dust storm. Maybe it's I the should color slow scheme down because I caught a five pounder boat. right over there in practice. So did he tell you that, or you know what an Idaho dust storm actually looks like? The color. Well, I'd have to Maybe keep that I to myself, Davey. Ease a little up for a second. <laughs> oh. No, he told me about it before he did it, and I tried to talk him out of it, to be honest. I'm like, I think your red and black is really you, <laughs> and then I saw his boat, and I was like, yeah, once that again. That one Brandon caught me Bonnick off guard. Is much wiser than I. I agree with you, though. It's unusual for an angler like him after so much I mean, success. And he's been out here a long time. He still seems head. young, Wait, but he has is. been out here a long time. And that to establish that red and black. Uh, that one was pretty lucky. I was a little lucky. Here. I think I'd change colors maybe after a bad year, not after a AOI. Oh, you're a professional angler. You change <laughs> colors. I, it's very easy to get you to change colors. The color so green will make you change colors, check. won't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually said, and this is how he's such a weird, deep-thinking young man. Uh, he said my jersey was really, he said it was really cool. He said and everything, and I'm, the red and everything, it worked. He said, but I feel like it was more... I was trying to be what I thought people wanted me to be, and he said, this represents more of my roots. He's more of an Idaho dust stormy kind of guy. Yeah. Four box, Palinick, Martin, well, two of the right bites. and Hackney. <laughs> just, just give us three more of those, we'll be all right. I only need five of them. We get five like that. Can't complain. Hard to complain if we can do that. Just looks like there's another little entrance right here. I can't believe that fish bit. Hmm. A little ditch goes somewhere. <laughs> well, uh, I I have always loved earth tone colors, right? Your your greens, tans, browns. Growing up in North Idaho, like that, just I fell in love with those colors. And I became black and red and white because Rigid Industries, LED lighting, when they became my title sponsor in 2013, those were their colors. And they were with me for a long time. They were my title sponsor for five years. Uh, and I was with them even longer than that. And so I just, I just kept the black and red and it, it kind of became my thing, but it wasn't ever really my thing because I always loved these earth tone colors. So this year, I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just make the switch. And uh, I like it. Changed up the boat wrap, the truck wrap. All I can think about right now, Davey Hyde, is there is someone on, like, Bass Boat Central right now heavily typing, I can't believe I turned in the first day and they're talking about an Idaho dust storm. <laughs> Talk about fishing. <laughs> talking about fishing. We can talk about this guy, Scott Martin. What an unbelievable oh, day. He came yeah, into this yeah, event, yeah. and we kind of talked about it. Only guy really with pressure on him. It's the first event of the year. 
But, man, he's got a great opportunity, and he is seizing it so far in day one, Davey Height. He really is, and congratulations to him. A lot of pressure on him. I, I, I can only imagine I had the same pressures when I'd fish my home lake, fishing the BASS tournaments. You just put a lot of pressure on yourselves because you want to perform around your family and your friends. And you can see that in Scott this morning, so good for him. Uh, had a great start, mixing it up a little bit, had an area. Uh, to himself, which is always a great thing to have here in Florida. And uh, I think he laid off of those fish. So uh, if he does not, you know, help his weight any this afternoon, I don't think it's because he's run out of fish. He's just kind of mixed it up a little bit. Still feeling good. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm I, there's a there's a little bit of me that's kind of just staying here to block it, not block it, but at least see if anybody gets in here. You know, I've got other stuff to run, some more community hole stuff. So I'm really just trying to learn if I can find a few more little zones. And we caught all our fish, literally all of our fish in one little little 100 yard stretch. There's, there's another 100 yard stretch in here somewhere, I'm sure. You kind of figure that out. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. I mean, this is all new to me. I didn't really fish it much at all, you know, uh, checked it in pre-practice. And so if they weren't in here at all then. They've moved in, obviously, now. So, you know, just got to mill around. I think that's our best chance, you know. I can go out there in the middle with all the boats drifting around. All I'm doing is catching fish I don't need. or I, I'll do that later if I have to. So I've got a long day tomorrow, short day today. We're going to leave here around 2 o'clock. That's about an hour and a half. And um, that's what we'll do. So I don't know if I'll get any more bites in this top water, but these clouds are here. And the wind's here. I should get another bite on this top water. Top water has certainly been the magic bait for him this morning. Perfect conditions for it. So calm this morning. Uh, warm nights. And that is, you know, that's one of a handful of baits that every time you come to Florida, you need to you need to have tied on. You need to have it on because those bigger fish can't seem to resist that bait on certain days tomorrow they might not like it at all it changes from day to day but when they're biting it you need it in your hand scott martin made some big changes in the off season said he felt tired on tour last year said he had ballooned all the way up to 240 pounds and lost 45 pounds in the off season. Really? He said, and he, it was his goal to go into the season feeling healthier than he has in his entire tournament career. And he said, when I make the first cast this morning, I do feel that. All I thought the whole way through it is 240. That, that, that's a goal weight for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible to lose 45 pounds in off season. Yeah. He had to do a lot of work. A lot of work. Paul, Nick a lot too. of discipline. You know, he, I, I don't know that he was trying to lose any weight but he did an intense training in during the off season you know said my arms were getting tired at certain tournaments when i was cranking he said and just the fact that i would be distracted by like it wasn't debilitating pain or anything like that but the fact that it, my mind would distract and think about that he said i think i can be better and did this ridiculous mountain climbing fitness it's nuts, really. I mean, you think of it that young, I would be so disconnected. I'd be like, I'm a two-time angler of the year. Woohoo! So we got to talk more about that. Lee Livesey was on your podcast yeah. uh, just about a week or so ago, and he's just the opposite. I want to hear what your <laughs> thoughts are on Lee Livesey. Yeah, not not a lot of not a lot of training for Lee, but but Paulick's done a lot. I mean, I'm doing a lot here today on a body of water. That has proved, or not a body of water, but a state that has proved to be his nemesis in the Elite Series. Finished below 100th on 1721 Angler of the Year. But man, a good start here will give him the right momentum as he tries to defend his progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title here on the fabled fishery that is Lake Okeechobee. Yes! Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Site One celebrating their fifth year as a partner of Bass and, of course, kicking off the season one of the most fabled fisheries on Earth. 
Lake Okeechobee. And let's have a look at our leader, who is a generational angling icon, chasing down his first Elite Series title. There's a great look at his sponsors. Oh, and more. Oh, and more. <clears throat> okay. Hooked up again. Yep. The average size of the fish he has caught this morning is just really incredible. It's not like he's caught 20 fish to get to this 26 pounds. It's just he's yeah. caught three to eight pounders. Yeah. Yeah, he's Which is so rare. Yeah. You know, you always see that. Maybe a four. But what you have to have here. Yeah. He's mad, dude. He didn't even know he's hooked until just Watch now. Watch more. <clears throat> nice. I don't know if that helps or not, man. It's a good fish, though. He's swimming fast. Yeah. So what I don't want to do is just catch a bunch of these. Mess it up. <clears throat> there we go. Another little zone. How rare is what we're seeing? I mean, we're seeing hip generally. Day one later is going to be somebody with an eight pounder, or something, okay. which None is so hard to repeat. And he's all by himself. Yeah. Probably all by himself is the most surprising to me. Oh, yeah. Lake Okeechobee. And you say, if you haven't been here, and I keep saying that because a lot of folks that are watching have not been here. How can you not have a place all to yourself that's 730 square miles of fishing? Well, come down here and spend a week and you'll figure it out. It's, this place gets fished all day, every day, and it's hard to, for those anglers not to find where those schools of fish are, even on a lake this size. The pride of Gonzales, Louisiana, the hack attack, <laughs> Greg Hackney. Blind in one eye. Can't see out the other. I look, I don't know. It's a waste of time. I need to be cool in pounds. Oh, I'm skinny. I ain't taking no chance, baby. I guess I must have got all of it because it about staggered me when I first set the hook. I was like. That's the fun thing about fishing in South Florida. The way he's fishing is the way I fished here a lot. And when you set the hook in that thick reeds like that with a jig, you, you think it's a 10 pounder and it could be a one pounder. And then the very next flip, it could be that 10 pounder. It's just, you never know. You catch all sizes. and. Again, Scott Martin, has, the reason he's the leader, his average size fish is much, much bigger than anyone else. All by myself. <laughs> That's a, I mean, you got, I know it's day one. But you really have to say this tournament is setting up for him. It's, of course, you know, his family is one of the most famous people from this part of the world. Uh -huh. But, I mean, I just don't see how he, you know, because you know he's got backup spots. He has to. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the big key, I think, for him this week is uh, knowing where these fish should be with each day that passes, with the weather warming, with the lake this level. Because I've fished here quite a bit, but I've never fished here with the lake this high. Yeah. But he has. Been here his whole life. He's seen it. Highs and lows, uh, which it certainly does. And we heard him mention earlier in pre practice there were no fish in this area. But he knew that, hey, they should be going there. And, you know, obviously why he checked it in official practice and started there this morning. And I, you know, Ronnie asked 
who's your picks. And I actually picked Scott to win this tournament because I think he's due on the Elite Series and to win right here in his hometown. See, that's the difference between me and you. You were nice about it. I actually threatened him and said, you better win this tournament <laughs> on our preview show. Speaking of which, make sure you check that out. Every Wednesday at 9 a.m. before Elite Series events, somehow they've got us to do more work, Davey. But I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm looking forward to that throughout the season doing a preview. Oh, that's the right guy. He was only on there about 30 minutes before I knew it. That's what happens when you get old. Solid fish there for Jason Christie. Will definitely help. It uh, cut out at least look like a quarter pound or so. How cool is that right there? Top oh, corner. Yeah. Larry Nixon back at bass. And, and and to have Scott Martin there in the in the four box also. But years that Larry Nixon battled against his dad, Roland Martin. Uh, that's really, really incredible to see that and and just think about all those times, you know, when Larry was certainly in the prime of his career, Roland was, and and uh, I can remember reading a lot of Bassmaster magazines back in those days with those two, and, and now to see Scott here, a very accomplished angler, and on his home lake battle, battling against a guy that his dad had to battle against back in the day. Very cool. Larry was really nervous this morning and you know yeah and i was i watched him afterwards because sometimes you think ah he's i mean he's larry nixon he's he's pretty polished yeah so you think he might just be playing it up at about the moment no he's but, not no he was very it's it was certainly a, a joy for me to get to know larry nixon i've read about him when i was a teenager you know and then to get to know him but then once you really get to know him the reason he's still doing it he still just loves it he loves to fish bass tournaments. And and that's why he seems, you know, a little nervous, a little giddy, whatever you want to say, because he, he really, really still enjoys doing what he does. And that's why he's so contagious. Everybody likes Larry Nixon because you can tell he's he's got a smile on his face every day and he's enjoying I'm life. Up this way. That ain't good. They're coming in here, 100%. It's probably Canterbury. They heard us. We were talking about him being all by himself. And <laughs> probably Canterbury, he said. I think it's Canterbury. Do you think it's Canterbury, Dave? What he don't know is I'm just practicing. It better be Canterbury. <laughs> Hell, that back corner might be the best. We'll be able to tell because I'll be in there before the day's over. If it is Canterbury, you think Scott throws them out, Davey? It'd be interesting to see. I hope it is Canterbury just for that. They're friends, and they share information, but it'll be interesting to see. Gone, get. I hope it's a guide boat with some shiner fishermen. Oh. No, I don't wish that what on him What is wrong with you? The true evilness of Davey. I don't wish that on him. I, I, did, I, did, I was not thinking when I said that. Sorry, I was unaware that my microphone was on. <laughs> Reigning and defending progressive bass master angler of the year, Brandon Polinick. There we go.
I guess nothing to see there. I'm not so sure that fish was going to help him anyway. Move along. Let's join. <laughs> Move along. Go to the world champion. The world champ, Jason Christie. That's all important and everything, but his fiance Shanna, a rabid Kansas City Chiefs fan. So congratulations to her and let's just say all, all of the Chiefs kingdom, whoever it may be. Sorry. You know, I'm not the avid fan that you are, I must admit. But I do keep up with NFL football. Uh -huh. But it is amazing how many Kansas City Chiefs fans they are now compared to oh, 20 years ago. Trust me. I mean, 20 years ago. <laughs> the Chiefs? Who, who are you talking the about? The bandwagon is getting full. But, I, <laughs> hey, come on. It's way better than before. Trust me. Yes, yes, yes. I talk about this often because I've learned this, and it's one thing that just stands out to me. You see a Jason Christie. You expect him to do well. Currently 40th place. Uh, if I was a betting man, I'm going to say he's going to move up before way in time. But you you could put a camera in eight other boats, and they'd be flipping something that looks very similar. Very similar bait, very yeah. similar reads. But a Hackney, a Christie, a Scott Martin, a, people that – you know are going to do well, and they don't they don't pull some magic rabbit out of a hat. they got a flipping stick and a jig or a creature bait or a worm, Cinco, and they fish what looks very similar, but they have different results like every time. It's, it's just not that big of a gap between yeah. the guys that are going to, you know, someone's going to be 80th to place today. And I guarantee you he probably didn't do much different than what we're watching these, you know, Jason Christie or Greg Hackney or Scott Martin do. Here comes the intruder. Oh, well, just that does look like Scott Canterbury. Maybe looking for a bottle of water. It is a Yamaha, and it is. Uh, it looks like his profile. I think that is him. Really, you can see his profile from that. Oh, well, side. let's see who it is. I, I bet <laughs> you fifty cents. No, I think it is him too. I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, look, he's got his hand on his hip. That, I am not a I, body language expert, but that is you not welcome his profile. Ruby. <laughs> tell something about his profile, can't you? What is he doing? You got him? I got him all right. Yeah. What do you got? Yeah. Like 20? Over 20? Yeah. Just went in here blind. Went in here blind. I didn't, I stopped up there and it was muddy. So I said, well, I'll come in here first. That's the old let's chat while I cast. How many did you catch down there in that drift? Huh? How many did you catch in that drift down there? I've only caught six all day. A lot How of people. Catch in here, no, not really, but I caught some big ones. I caught a couple of big ones, like a couple of sevens. Doing what? Swim jig and top water, flipping. That's good. Your other spot didn't catch nothing where you started? It was muddy. Really? Did you go down yonder? I hadn't been, hadn't been anywhere but here. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, the way I look at it, I mean, nobody else has been in here. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay in here and try to learn it the best I can, you know? I started to start in here. I figured Atkins was going to show up. It was going to make me sick. Did anybody catch big ones down there? Yeah. Cooper Gallons catching some big ones. There's several people catching them. Like 20 pound bags? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it ain't that close to them. I just hear them yelling and stuff. <laughs> what about that stretch of those pads? I never did get to fishing most of them. I really don't know where you're talking about either. I 
I can give you the waypoint if you're going back down there. Little negotiation, little negotiation. <clears throat> Very interesting. I love Bass Live. I love Bass Live. I mean, there's Not a camera I on me. Do the exact same thing. There's a camera on me, so I can't tell you to get the out of here. So I'll just offer you a waypoint. I come bearing gifts, but please leave this area. We'll be right back in just a few minutes from the fabled fishery that is Lake Okeechobee. Yeah! On the water! No way! Live coverage of the Site 1 Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Welcome back to the sunshine state of Florida. And wildlife abounds here on in Okeechobee, right in the center of Florida. And we were just witness to some Elite Series politic and some some negotiations on the water and Scott Martin has not had to negotiate to get a bite today because his tournament is off to an incredible start what stood out with you about that conversation Davey uh, <laughs> everything I loved every minute of it I mean I've I've been out there been there done that and uh it's, it's just fun and it's all part of the game we play that's why we love it I mean you they're very close friends. He's not going to tell him to leave. Uh, uh huh. Especially it is camera. day one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is day one. I mean, you you. And we heard him saying earlier before anybody even were close to coming in there that hey, I'm kind of blocking it, but maybe I need to leave, but maybe I don't. All those things were going on in his mind, and just minutes later, he hears a boat. But luckily, it's a good friend of his. Yeah. I wish we had a telestrator because I'm pretty sure I could show you the general region where he's caught 90% of his fish. And obviously it's behind that point because he literally went right to that point and carried him with his hip on his <laughs> hand on his hip. I just hope he's the big one that I need to quit fishing. I feel like if we did like a Bass Live After Dark, which I'm scared to even mention this. And like, hey, tonight we're going to go back to Scott and Scott's house. Why are you mentioning that? <laughs> you want to work after hours? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need a nine-pounder coming up. Now I've upset producer Michael again. He doesn't want to yeah. do After Dark. Nine-pounder. Deathly afraid of us having a tie one day and having a fish off. Oh. Good cast. So he's calling his shot here. Let's hope it comes true. I'd take an eight pounder. It doesn't have to be nine. Where's Canterbury? <laughs> oh, I see him. In the oh, top, yeah, there top he is. Right. Go on, get. He must have caught one. I just keep thinking of the people's court. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Scott was leading an elite series event. <laughs> yes. And the defendant. The thing about Lake Okeechobee, all this vegetation, but you can see you can see people's head and shoulders over. There's nowhere. I shouldn't say there's nowhere, but very few places to hide. Uh, you can be seen a long long way away you don't have trees you have this vegetation and a lot of it only tops out at about five or six feet in defense of the situation and it, of course in defense of myself i have to point out that they are roommates they yep. do you we've seen this before where they will meet up on the water you know what i mean run into each other and yep. kind of they probably talked about this area. yeah yep I'd, I'd be willing to bet they did canterbury just chose to start somewhere else and and now he's coming to this i don't think he's in there for any other reason that he already knew about it, whether Scott told him or he may have told Scott. Who knows? Or maybe they both, hey, maybe they saw one another there in practice. But It feels like the whole team thing, 
has gotten so much more in the last Absolutely. number of years. Like, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's them Johnston kids. They made everybody change. <laughs> Why do you think it is, Davey? Why do you think? I, don't, I was just thinking that to myself. I, I don't. I don't really know. Um, other than maybe s some people that you knew were sharing information, like the Johnson brothers, and having success. And hey, let's try that. It's difficult, though. It's not a team sport. It's an individual sport. And for one day. Some scenario comes around and someone feels like, hey, this isn't a team. Yeah. Um, which may or may not be the case, but uh, it's, it's difficult. You know, Corey said to me, that's the big advantage they feel that they have. You know, not only do they work as a team, plenty of people work as a team, a lot of them. You know, I would say there's probably more people working as a team on the Elite Series now than there isn't working as a team, you know, really? in somewhat. And at some of them are bigger, smaller, but... That has definitely changed yeah. in the last five years. But Corey's like, we 100% trust each other with everything. He's like, if every fisherman, if they go pre-fish an area, no matter how good the person is that went there, there's all, it's just a natural thing for a fisherman to have in the back of their head. Yeah, but did you try this? Right. He doesn't feel that way if Chris is there, and Chris doesn't feel that way if Corey's there. And they also split the money, so they, at some point. Oh, I think that adds a lot of trust right there when they split the money. Same account. But Pretty do they wild. split the trophies? Do you not think Corey thinks in his heart that I'm better than him, he's got more trophies than I do? Oh, I think he's thought about that his whole life. This is You've known new to fishing. a lot longer than me. Yep. I mean, some younger brothers just need beat up. I mean, sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, in their case, now a four box. Brandon Polnick, Jason Christie, Thanks. Brandon Lester, and Greg Hackney. Oh. <laughs> One of those Okeechobee specials. Yeah. Uh-huh. So when you were talking earlier about guys like Christie and Hackney and what they're doing versus somebody who will be in 80th place doesn't look that much different. Are they just better at it or are they better at identifying the right hey. areas? Uh, both. Come on, both. Fat Betsy. Where are you at? And then they're, they're going to, you know, Hackney may pick up a, Vibrating jig or spinner baits. Christy, everybody knows he'll certainly do I that. Call her Betsy. That might not See, be her name. Brandon Lester hooked up. Slick, slick conditions. They know. Hey, I need to throw this Cinco and not that spinner bait. Or this Cinco and not that vibrating jig. I think throughout the day, those little hey, I need to pick this up because of this. Same with Scott Martin. The area is a big, big part of it, but him throwing that top water lure and having that confidence to throw that, uh, probably the difference in him leading the tournament and not. I mean, I'm confused because a moment ago he said I'm catching him on a jig and a worm and a top water. And flipping. And a <laughs> I mean, you can flip an X prop, can't you? <laughs> So Lee Livesey has started a rumor, and I, I, I think we should just throw it out there. I mean, producer Michael's listening in. Everybody's all ears in the truck. There's mumblings in the social media world that Davy Height is coming back to the Elite Series. Are you going to abandon me and leave me on shore? <laughs> uh, wow, that you put me on the spot. Quite uncomfortable for me. You put me on the spot. Um I do still love to fish. I get asked that a lot, and it's almost bothers me that people ask if I still fish. I do love to fish, but I love being with you, Dave. 
Uh, that pause was a little if too long. If you see me for lose me 45 pounds, right if I lose 45 pounds and start, <laughs> the, then then you really need to start worrying. <laughs> I start trying to get my A game back going. and see me on this very stringent weight loss program. If I was the producer of this show, I'd have a counter on that pause to just see how long it was because it was an uncomfortable. Put me on the spot. I just ask you a simple question. Are we going to continue being partners? Yes, absolutely. Oh, sure. As long as you'll have me. <laughs> What makes Lester such a threat in Florida? I think he loves to fish slow. He loves to fish soft plastics. He knows, uh, and the question you asked a minute or two ago, is the, the technique or the area, I think, is both. He's really good at finding a, you know, it's, it's really not rocket science. A good mixture of vegetation and clean water, nine out of ten times is going to be where your leaders slash winners are going to come from. And that's why you see all these other boats around there. Then it goes to you're in the area. Now, how do you dissect it? How do you learn? Because there'll be times you see the mixture there. Well, I've sparse got, vegetation or thick. I think I've got 12 rods on the deck, and they're all just things that I've caught them on the past down here in Florida. Um, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of dragging around weightless worms, worms with little bitty weights on them. Stuff that comes through this grass real easy. Right now, I'm just throwing a little bitty light Texas rig because there's some high drill on. You can see these dollar pads and stuff in here. I'm just trying to get a little bit finessy with them since there's so many boats in here. Hang on, we got one. Ain't a big one, but I think it might call it. So when you hear people in Florida, is this one of those deals where people are overthinking it? Oh, yes. Yes. Is it a baby? More often a than baby not. Baby for a baby baby. Ounces are ounces, though. Nice to get a bite. It's been a little bit slow, but... Yeah, it's just a... Uh, just a 1 16th ounce Texas rig weight and uh, just a zoom trick worm. Nothing special, but something about a straight tail worm in Florida. They, uh, they definitely like it a lot. I'm just throwing a little Mustad grip pin edge, straight shank hook, three alt. And it's just something that you can uh, get through this grass real easy, you know. And I mean, throw it on spinning tackle, but I've got 12 pound leader, so if I can get a hold of a big one, I I got plenty of rod and reel to hand <clears throat> to handle a big one. So, like I said earlier, the whole key is just to generate bites. So we'll throw this. I'm planning on throwing this for 20 or 30 minutes, and then we'll pick up. A big rod again and that big stick worm because I think they're going to start biting here.
just because Brandon Paul, Brett, Brett, Brandon Lester is competing in a tournament doesn't mean he doesn't have time to do our Bass Pro Shops top baits and a great job of that. And Davey Hyde, I mean, I enjoy doing these segments with you. I, I hope we do it for a long time, but uh, I mean. I think we will. I think we will. Relationship I enjoy change. doing it with you too, Dave. This was our first one of the year. I certainly enjoyed it. Oh, well, they always start like that. At the end of the season, <laughs> if we're still getting along, then we'll celebrate. Speaking of celebrating, your leader atop the leaderboard, a generational angling icon, Scott Merton. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Well, depending on what uh, group you went out with today, what flight, it might be three or more hours left of fishing for our 104 anglers out there today on day number one of the 2023 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We're going to take you through a couple more hours of it ourselves here on Bassmaster Live. So great to have you with us today. we got Scott Martin. The uh, local favorite on top. In the top five, we have three Floridians. He's my roommate. We share water. Uh, you know, I don't mind at all. It stinks when you find a small spot. We just got to be smart about it. I don't think you can carry, carry us to the final day in here, both of us, you know? No, stuck on something. Ooh, that got me excited for a second. Well, you hear Scott Martin talking about the dynamic of sharing water with roommates, stuff like that. Scott Canterbury, Scott Martin uh, definitely share a lot of information, and it's always worked out. See Paul and I cooked up right now. Mm -hmm. You. A little better. Like I said, I'd like to catch some of those two to three pounders. Man, I'm glad we decided to come over here. A little better. Question is number three. Number two, no, not number two. It's gonna be number three or number four. I think number... Oh yeah, I like it. I like it. It's a little bit better. A little better. Out of kid, Kyle. Out of kid. Finally got to put a new bait on. What big turnaround right there. <laughs> no, it's oh too God. early. Yeah. It, it, that's not one. That's an alligator. Right oh, there. yeah. That's Boy, that is a that suitcase is. head. That's a grieve exactly eater. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. But uh, since the first, really, the first three and a half hours of competition, Brandon Polinick with one big one punching yeah. mats, Changing locations and techniques has put together a very solid day so far. But back to what I was saying with, boy, you know Scott Martin would have liked to slid on through the day without seeing anybody <laughs> in that little Who back, wouldn't, though? Who backwater wouldn't? area. It'll be, it'll be really interesting uh, to see is... as roommates how those guys manage it tomorrow. Jig, also known as chatter wagon in my world. Uh, it's one that I tied up last night in my camper. And then I'm pairing it with a little X-Zone mini swammer, actually. It's a little three and a half inch swim bait and green pumpkin. And that's that's seemed to really be the best, the best thing that I've been able to get bid on. That's what I've had the most bites on today. Just covering water. 
Brandon Wright, he was kind of lingering in the high 30s, low 40s. Yeah. He's up in the top 12. Trying to get yes. in some of these areas like this and use the 360 to find what the fish are wanting to be on, but the, the stuff that's under the water, right? The stuff that's not just visible that everybody can roll around and fish, which is where I caught those last two fish. I think just nobody's really been casting out this way. There's just a little ditch that runs in here and there's a little flat that's got some of those cattails on them that you just can't see. Mmm, I sure felt and looked like a bite. Brandon was 105th here in 2017, so he's, he's upped his game. They could, have, game. they could have, instead of giving him zero points for that performance, they could have given him negative five because he was so far below 100. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> yeah, there are a couple. That's the thing. When you get over 100, we don't, we don't award 104 points for first. So whoever finishes 101 to 104 each event will get zero points. Ronnie, what's this whole jacked up Keith Poche thing? What? <laughs> what? Well, what, so what is going on there? Mercer texted me. Is he in this tournament? He is on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but he has not made a cast on Okeechobee in tournament action today, no. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Yeah, exactly. There's really a possibility is. that he may not fish this event at all. Because <laughs> he's, you know, you got two straws and well, different drinks, you know? I understand. It's... And sometimes you drink one of more of one than the other and it'll upset your tummy. That is weird, to say the <laughs> least. I'll drop rafters back down. More confusing. Than uh, that last one's probably two and a quarter. He's another one. He's he's one pulling double duty like John Cox did a few years ago. So there will be plenty of overlaps just because we which know could how. be yes. very successful more fish or in here. not. Yes. I just need the bigs to show up. Very hard to make championship events through yes. points yes. unless you really catch them when you show up. doesn't look like it, but boy, where Brandon Polinick is, there is a lot of pressure there. Lots of pressure. You, you old typical west side of Lake Okeechobee.
in your experience, Z, have you found when areas get super pressured, the fish draw even closer to cover, or they will just start to disperse out into maybe the middle, a little bit deep, you know, off the edges of things, because it's gonna, we'll see its effect tomorrow afternoon into the weekend, you know, as these areas get two full days of of a lot of boat pressure. Kind of a little bit of both. What you've seen, and especially in in Lake Okeechobee tournaments past, is you almost see where they'll sag away a little bit. You know, it might, it might only be 50 to 75 yards, but they'll kind of get out of where those core beat down areas were at. Or it, it, another thing that you kind of see here, especially late in the day, a lot of times on Okeechobee or first light, is you just land on them. You land yeah. on, a, on one of those magic, you know, 30 to 40 yard stretches like we got to see Scott Martin on taking a look at, it's actually not land, that's water right there, mm -hmm. um, but that's, it gives you a really good look of how many anglers, and those, are, those anglers are bunched up. We see Bradley Hallman and Polinick and Taku Ito. Jay shakur has been one of the anglers that's kind of, yeah. he's in that region, but he's been off the beaten path and, and really been alone most of the day. There is a party down in South Bay. Mm -hmm. been, <laughs> been one there every event on Lake Okeechobee a week ago, obviously this morning. One interesting thing to note, out of our top 10, a guy in first, Scott Martin, and a guy in sixth, Jay Shakir, are near very popular areas, but they, like you said, have a Off, little just, bit of, yeah, and they're able to, to be in the top six because of that. Now, what does Canterbury say, Tommy, to Scott Martin? <laughs> what? I'm just curious. What, is, what does Canterbury say to Scott Martin? Because I heard Scott Martin say, well, I think I got around 20 pounds when he lays down 27 and change later <laughs> yeah. today. I'm just stating You got him. I got him all right. There's over right. 20. That's right. an accurate statement. I, I just know. grossly underestimated a 30-pound stringer. <laughs> it happens. Holy... Uh, just a little, little roommate gamesmanship right there is all that yeah, is. You know, part of the we're just out scouting. Now. Part of the playing field. Well go looking where I got all them bites and practice. They're gone. That water's been, I don't know whether they had the east wind all day yesterday or what, but it sure messed up Ten House Cove. I can't imagine how many boats is down there at Horse Island, that little bit of clear water way in behind that grass. But I should have probably went down there. I just knew these fish here would bite. I still ain't give up on them. I've moved back in a little farther now where the water's cleared up a little bit. And of course, you can see everybody's packed in back here. We are well into the second half of this fishing day right here. And there's plenty of time left for all of these anglers to get some big business done. But uh, guys like Scott Martin, and all the rest of our top five have done very, very well so far. And we were going to be checking on all of the above when we get back here. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. I don't need a net. Woo! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Zona. I don't need a net, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo! Man, that. <clears throat> my mom's been going through some stuff. <clears throat> and she's my biggest fan. <clears throat> I just want to catch a big one for her. All right. 
Love you, Mama. To be able to win it here in front of my family and friends would be awesome. I want to go out there and make really good decisions, not only for my family and friends, but also for the lake and everything that we've done here. So, yeah, there's a little extra pressure for sure, but that pressure is going to help me fish and stay focused. Mm-hmm. Marathon peak performance. Uh, it's pretty much was a beat down up till about 11 o'clock Eastern time today. Marathon peak performance. Scott Martin in a little what he called. I got myself a little bit of a hidey hole. Well, he definitely has that. He says he has somewhere between nine and 29 pounds <laughs> at this point. No, right? not, Depending on who he's talking that, to. Yes. Not, well. <laughs> Unbelievable morning for Scott Martin. He said it was not a little area that could sustain two or three or four boats. Well, he had it all to himself, got the job done. Like we said, it'll be very curious to see how he manages that tomorrow with roommate Scott Canterbury, Marathon Peak Performance, Scott Martin. Well, I haven't caught any more. I haven't really learned a whole, a whole bunch more about this area other than maybe that, that starting spot or starting area is the best, obviously. Found a couple more little zones in here that, but I think it's the time of day. I think these fish are just not reacting real well. I'm throwing a prop bait still just because I want to try to catch a big, big one. I think, I think tomorrow, I think they'll bite right in here. I think if I came over to this side in the morning, I could catch them. But what a blessing. I mean, you know, we caught what we need for day one at least. Got to go out and do it three more days. Feels good. Start the season off with a good day. And if you're just joining us, most of his work done with a Devil Horse style topwater bait today. And he really just landed right on them this morning. You said he didn't move that boat no, for two and a half no. hours, did he? That's why when he said I might start over here, I, I don't know about that one. That area where he stopped on, where he had his power poles down, that was a that was a yeah. beating. And, and obviously. He lost a couple big fish in there, you know, and those are probably very territorial fish that were are close to spawning. So a little bit more left. And Scott Martin said we talked about it earlier. He thought he could get two to three days out of this very small spot. Be nice to get a flipping bite. Like I said, I haven't had one in a long time. And Z, when you think about it, you could do, when you think about making an area last, it could be 15 pounds a day for three days. What, what's the number? But if you go catch 30 pounds one day, then you can make it, you can only, you only need three or four maybe, and they don't have to be six pounders. They can be okay and protect that big lead like we see in Florida. You catch a big bag and try to protect it the rest of the week. Well, if it, if it turns into a lot, you know, more of a tough event, it still looks like there's going to be plenty of bags over. Weigh-in's going to be a little more impressive than people thought coming into day one. But there have been. There have been a lot of tournaments that we've covered in the state of Florida that you're right. You see a big day one stringer, and then it's just a protected, like you said, a, a catch 15 12, to 17 15, pounds. 20, you're right. Yeah, something around those three days. Phoenix boats cut line currently at 16.3 right now. That seems kind of high. For, for 50? For 50. Right now, Greg De Palma. Wow, 16. That seems very high. Seems the two most recent events here. I don't think it was any much more than 15 a day, was it? How far back he is of the yeah, lake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Sutra, are you saying that's okay? Yeah, Tommy, that's how far back they are. It's 10 oh, pounds. Oh, 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 yeah, oh yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, I was, I was like, yeah. uh, that's I was right. Refreshing. I was looking at the wrong thing. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's about 10 pounds even right now, right? 
I've got started four, reading at a third grade level yeah, recently. Like this morning where I pitched it out there in the whole There's a lot of problems that I'm dealing with, Tommy. Yeah. Give yourself some grace. You have four oh, anglers right? on bass track over 20 pounds right now. Bernie Schultz has our Phoenix Boats Big Bass in 8-8. Eight, eight. He's right at 19 pounds in fifth place. Biggest day one lead in lead series history was right here, 2012, Ish Monroe. What kind of bag were you talking, Such? As we set that up. He had the 34 <laughs> pounds, five yeah, ounces. Guess that. who was second? <laughs> Mr. Davey Height. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, big, big. eight pounds, 12 ounces behind say, on day one. Day one lead, eight, eight pounds, 12 Folks ounces of home. record. Folks well, Ish Monroe deciding to start in an area on the final day that he did really did not fish much throughout the entire it, tournament. If it, I remember it, that it. tournament 11 years ago correctly, he was with cameraman Wes Miller, had some beautiful, beautiful, big, big Lake Okeechobee bass and said some phenomenal things that, that absolutely final day. Did. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't want riding high. I, I caught myself wanting to say exactly what it is. <laughs> Cause it was coming out right there, Tommy. Oh, Look, it's the first it day of class. Day. It it's our first day. day of class right now. That's Good right. stuff right there from 2012. <laughs> Ish Monroe. Glad, glad I put the brakes on. <laughs> Broke a hundred pounds in that. And I think that's the only Florida Bassmaster Elite Series event uh, you know, since it was formed in 06 to break 100 pounds. And I wanted to bring it into the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge to talk about Ish Monroe and 174 of his closest friends that have signed up to fish all nine Bassmaster Opens next year. They're going to be a part of the Bassmaster EQ, the elite qualifier. And so there's been a lot of changes with the Opens. The format is, for the most part, same. There's still nine events, uh, three divisions. You can jump in one division if you want to maybe make the classic if you win one of those events. But to qualify, for the Bassmaster Elite Series for the 2023 season of the Opens for next year's Elite Series field, you'll have to fish all nine Bassmaster Opens. And this is the way the schedule lays out. If you're fishing in Division One down south, you fall Alabama. That's where we're going to kick off our Open season in March, a uh, week after Seminole. Then we'll go to Wheeler and Harris Chain throughout the year. Harris Chain is actually going to be our last event of the season, wrapping up the Opens in the Division Three, I believe, the up north and more northern division. Bugs Island in Virginia, St. Lawrence River, which is exclusively the river, not the lake. So it'll be a different vibe out of, uh, you know, the old stomping ground. That's so very and not then, north. And then <laughs> Watts Bar, obviously we come a little farther south in the uh, fall time in Tennessee. Then our kind of our central division or division two, Toledo Bend, Eufaula, Oklahoma, and Lake of the Ozarks to end it off in that division in the fall. So if you want to make the Bassmaster Elite Series for 2024, you have to fish all nine opens. People thought maybe 50, 60 anglers would sign up. We had 175 anglers at least sign up to fish all nine, including Ish Monroe, Bobby Lane, a lot of former champions. Wow. We'll get a kind of a detailed list throughout the week. We're going to talk opens uh, until we get to you follow for these first two elites. We're going to be able to preview some of the stops, some of yeah. the people, and some of the expectations we have to cover Bass Live later in the year. That'll be one to watch, or nine to watch, I should say. Excited to see a couple new venues on the open schedule this year with Bugs Island. Bugs Island. It's new, but it's one of the more nostalgic. Nutbush Creek. Yes. Then you've got um, Ufala, Oklahoma. That'll be a fun. And then Ozarks. We all know about that. But in the fall, when top water just reigns supreme, you can. We'll see a lot of good visuals on Bassmaster Live. Hopefully, at some of those. Really, look. I want to see what happens at Ufala, Oklahoma. That is a vast place. That is. It is huge. huge. Yeah. There's like. 27 bridges that cross it in different places it's, and you it takes an, uh, 45 minutes just to drive I think over the lake I think it's a part of the Red River system. it's the it's Canadian part, River the Canadian Canadian River yeah it will get dirty like the Red River in, in one of those yeah. arms of it so it'll be interesting in the middle of the year I'm excited for Toledo Bend in April as well it took a 15 pounder the other day was caught in a tournament there. It took 18 pounds to get in the top 15. So Toledo seems to be fishing well. Oh, yeah. 
uh, oh boy, taking a look from Larry Nixon's boat. Looks like it's a keeper. <laughs> kind of e right. ease the, the scale over. <laughs> was he hammering a cigar? He was. I mean, he had a stogie. I believe he was. <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah. if we can. <laughs> yeah, he had a big old stogie going. Another local there, Kobe Krieger, just landed a five-pounder. He's up to 28th place. And Tyler Rovette called with a four and a quarter. He's up to 21 and a half, second place all by himself now. For anybody joining us on Bassmaster Live today, one thing that we're going to definitely see tomorrow mm -hmm. on the show for day two is... Look at Chasey Christie with one. Doesn't look like it's going to help him. We're going to see a couple areas that are really, really, really crowded with some of your leaders. And I think we're going to end up seeing some areas tomorrow of Lake Okeechobee that we've never, ever covered before, Tommy. Really? That, nope. Okay. I think we're going to see some of that. How many guys do you think, everybody launches their boat hoping to win, hoping to get a top 10, hoping to make a check? How many guys here, because of the unknowns, launch their boat just to survive? I, I need to go catch 12 pounds a day, 13 pounds a day, just to not bomb, because the, fishing in a crowd, you could go catch seven pounds easy. You know? Yeah, but I think, I, think, I think practice really dictated the tournament last week and the lack of being able to run around. These anglers were able to watch a lot of the yeah. live coverage from last week, which it was very visual, visible to where it went down. The second part of that is not being able to run around at will in practice. If you have a bad practice, you just say to yourself, heck, man, I'm going to play it safe and get into one of these stable, mm -hmm. clear. Polinick was one of them that said, look, my practice was so bad, I have to play it safe and play bumper boats. So I, I, I think... I'll, and traditionally, the areas that fired a week ago that have fired today, they are areas that always, it, they always fire on this lake. It kind of felt for a Scott Martin or a Kobe Krieger or somebody who knows this place well, it felt like the practice period was kind of like the St. Lawrence last year where the Johnstons, it was blown out for a lot of people. It's hard to get work done and find stuff. And so they knew when it, when it laid down. They were I, at an I, advantage. I know, yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah. I can, know this wind direction didn't hit this spot. I don't have to necessarily You know, it's it, weird you know. bring that, that tournament up. One thing that really amazed me, as rough as that practice was on Lake Ontario, was how far certain anglers, without a lot of knowledge of Lake Ontario, a guy like Jason Christie, a guy like... Chris Eldane, Walters. Patrick Walters, how far they went out in practice and found them in those waves because it ripped for three days of practice. It's not like they were within two or three miles of the mouth of the river. I'm talking they yeah. were 40 to 50 miles out. Yeah. And when you get out in the lake, it's not like you can find a boat ramp nearby. That's a whole other yes, country. Yes, you, you, you have to you run. Yeah, you, you have to go from a, a distance pretty far. Well, for the majority of the anglers that we covered today, it, it w has been, at least we talked about it the first hour of the broadcast, it's been pretty much Florida 101, get to your spot, put your trolling motor down and go. Just dissect what you've mm -hmm. decided to land on.
You had mentioned a bite window for the afternoon. What, what, when does that generally occur? Like now? Now, yeah, yeah. now till, you know, dark. Okay. Um, and, and that's really tra traditionally been every single Florida tournament we've covered. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, especially, especially the time of year, you, you, water bakes a little bit, kind of gets up in that 71, 72. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? We've had one of those so far today. Well, we it was have. a dandy. Yeah. There's going to be some bummed out folks on this. It's not going to be Scott Martin, my <laughs> friend. This, this power pole replay of the day starting with a big one right here for Brandon Polinick. Said he was going to play it safe. Started with that big one right there, one that we are guessing a little bit over five. And then it went absolutely dead. Brandon Polinick, one of the anglers that decided to Basically pull up the stakes, move, make about a, call it, oh, about an eight to ten mile run. Come get it. That, oh, is, that oh. is, that's exceptional is what that is right there, well, Tommy Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about dialing up the excitement. Well, we got that with Brandon Polinick today. Went to a little bit of moving baits, a little bladed jig action, chatter wagon as he calls it. Power pole replay of the day, Brandon Polinick. What's huge for BP, Tommy, had a five pounder at nine o'clock and nothing else until 12 15. Wow. And then in, in, in an hour, he caught the rest of his weight in that one hour. So there will be those windows you talked about. Well, we'll be checking Brandon throughout the day. Most of our anglers that we have been following today will be going in in the first flight. Uh, so it'll be a different setup for a lot of our other guys and we may be learning some more about weights when we come back. So stick around. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Oh. oh my gosh, look at the size of that bass. Oh, baby, stay pegged. Mm -hmm. Don't you do it. Mm. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Mm. God, dog. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. Footage that launched a, a million daydreams of Florida fishing in the wintertime. Right there is Larry Nixon. The hair has changed. Iconic scene. That was a young Overstreet right there. No, no. Right. Yes, it was too. No, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> this was not. No. No. That is a beautiful. And I wonder if you had the courage to tell us the lure you were using. You read a rape. No, I caught it on a worm. I'm not going to fib. That's the truth. He tells you that. That's what he caught him on. He fished his first Bassmaster event here in the state of Florida back in 1977. Wow. St. John's River, Larry Nixon. That was uh, his uh, first visit here to the Big O was 1980. I think he finished 30, yeah. 41st place. Roland won that one. Yeah. It's interesting that Okeechobee being such long history with Bassmaster in general, but in fishing in general, and it took about 10 to 12 years for the first BASS event to happen, you know, 1980. His 262nd BASS event, he had 200 You FLW. can only suck so long. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Why didn't you eat it? He humped the water up all over it. Fourteen BASS victories. Comes back number two. Oh, active. Two more. 
behind Klon. so embarrassed. I wish I had a lighter swim jig. But I ain't sure a quarter wouldn't be the best. Pretty amazing. All these fish back in this stupid little old muck hole. Two fishies uh, in the 80s. He wants to pull a Ray Hanselman, who had four fish, just caught a six pounder, jumped from 68th to 31st. Wow, man. He's had to watch a couple big ones get caught here in the last hour. Here's that six pounder. Hanselman may be from Texas, but he is very, very good in the state of Florida, or at least when there is grass present, as we saw at the Harris Chain last year. An identified angler here. There you go. There's your stogie man. Steve Kennedy called to over 23 pounds with a 4.6. He's up in second place, just jumped over Tyler Rivet. Just three pounds back of Scott Martin right now. Mm -hmm. Starting to see some big ones get caught here in the last 30 minutes. Back here in this stupid little old hole. Ooh, he's got a big one. Oops, it come off. What is going on? Hooks good. Mm. Might have helped by ounces. What the deal is? He better watch out. David Fritz has caught a four and a quarter. He's ounces behind him in 13th place with 15 and a half pounds.
way off. Kyle Welcher just made a bit of a move with a four and a half pounder, get him up to 15 pounds even. Tell me how much does it take to get a camera tomorrow? To get a what? Camera. Top six tomorrow. Where do we go to 10 on Saturday? Yep, it's 10 on Saturday and Sunday. Six tomorrow. What do you say for weight? Probably a couple more minutes we're to, gonna to, leave. to get tomorrow's cut? Yep, to si top six. Oh, to six? Oh, for the top six. I'm going Three, 20 for tomorrow. I'm going 20 pounds. I think, I'm staying there. I yeah, think because, yeah, oh gosh, I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel there'll be 10 20 pound bags, I think it'll be 21 and a half. Wow. To get sixth. And there's still 15, 20 unaccounted for, too. So, you know, there's going to be something in there. I mean, there are guys, the last flight, Tommy, has three more hours to fish yeah. from right now. Oh, yeah. They check in at 5 Eastern time for the last flight. Yeah, 20 for sure. That's why Jason Christie mentioned that boat draw is very important. Sometimes you want that early boat draw, but there are times where. You have to change your game plan because of that. And Christy said, I got another area that's about 20, 25 miles away, but because I'm an early flight, I'm going to just stay in this area today and maximize it tomorrow when I'm the last flight. He's going to be one of the last people to leave the dock and the last ones to check in. He'll, he has more time. You know, It doesn't take an extra hour to go from 1 to 104 when you send them off in the morning. Right. It might take 10 or 15 minutes, so everyone gets a fair shot of being later or earlier and for him, he'll have an extra, you know, hour of fishing because of that at least. Don't go anywhere. We got uh, another full hour of live coverage for coming from this first day of the season, 2023, for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Okeechobee, bite window, we think, may be opening up a little wider, and who knows what's going to happen during the next hour. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Biggest lake in the southeast United States. You can see how big it is in comparison to the surrounding Florida terrain there. Giant Lake Okeechobee here. Filled with water from the Kissimmee River coming down out of East Toho. All the way down here, let's get out to Brandon Lester, a runner-up. Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Race last year. We got our new race starting today. Big one. Uh -huh. Not a great big one, but a big, big help. No doubt. Boy, after a long winter, that is just awesome footage to see right there. <laughs> Great camera work right, right there from Brian Evie. Really good. Oh, oh. I like it. Oh, 
come on now. He wasn't coming off. Look at that. It's bad when you're trying to unhook it, but then you're also like, well. That's a spawned outer, too. It's one thing that Scott Martin was saying that he thought that there was a major, major, major push a week ago with the moon that we were on. Felt that a lot of fish dropped their eggs a week ago. But still thought, we were talking about that earlier today, that the, just the warm, warm, even though we're not on a, you know, a typical spawning moon, that the temperatures at night, and especially during the day, would have a lot of fish still coming. Maybe starting to bite. This is a great fish catch. Man, you were right. Camera work was awesome. I tell you, when I missed that one, that first time the way it come up and just gulped, I was like, oh, that's a good in there. Well, after that seven pounder, Lester has four fish in the one pound range. He's glad to get rid of one of them. He'd probably like to get rid of the rest of them. Interesting anyway. I better look just to make sure I didn't while I go dump the wrong fish out. Come out that way. Can't get no hurry out here because it's you can't get around very well. I'm like, this hadn't been fished. I was think I fished around through it a little bit in practice, and uh, I didn't get any bites. But I was like, all those fish are in those pencil reeds. This is where most of the pencil reeds are.
Lester had that last fish entered as a three and a quarter, about a two and a quarter call. He's jumped up about 20 spots. Wow. 24th. Tell you what, what a great job, uh, Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer, Davey Hyde did. As they took over the helm a little while ago, we really enjoyed that, all of all the insights they had to share with us. And, and Dave, you're, you're, you're back, uh, lakeside there. Uh, I'm assuming back at the launch area, the weigh-in area. And uh, what are you looking forward to today? Reconnecting with all these guys, that's fun, right? Well, to be honest, I'm looking forward to this segment being over, guys, because um, <laughs> um, there's like an eight-foot gator that keeps swimming around here, and then, uh, I don't want to have to mess with that gator, but as you said, Tommy Sanders, it is day number one, kickoff of the season. It's always a fun weigh-in. I mean, it, will I pronounce all the names right? Maybe, maybe not, but I'm going to give it um, my best. But it's really cool. The big story this morning at takeoff was, and I don't know if I've ever seen this before, you get pros coming to the Elite Series people returning to bass and there's always an excitement around it from the fans and things like that i don't know that i've ever seen more pros giddy and excited because larry nixon is part of the Bassmaster elite series and and larry was really you know like you he kind of said on the mic that he you know i'm super nervous and stuff and you wonder you know is he just kind of playing up the the part but I watched him afterwards. I mean, it is so cool that this sport, somebody that's accomplished literally everything there is to accomplish in this sport, like Larry Nixon, still gets giddy. And um, it was pretty cool. Dave, real quick, we're looking at Larry Nixon here, and obviously a big day having him back fishing the Bass Masters. Really looking at what Scott Martin has done and definitely the weight of the world on his shoulders with more knowledge here you know, you can uh, compare him to his dad. He, he grew up on this lake. It, we have been waiting. We have been waiting for one of these performances from Scott Martin for the last couple of years, yet it's not quite happened yet on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Yeah, and, and going into this event, I mean, I said it to him this morning. I'm like, there's this is the first day of the beginning of the season nobody really has a lot of pressure on them but I feel like he's the only one that has that pressure because you're right and it, it's not dirting Scott I mean Scott I believe has two top 10 since being on the elite series why we're saying that why that stands out so much is because of the amazing career that he has had you know at the FLW tour and, and I think Scott would say himself you know I I've made classics but I haven't hung out in the neighborhood I'm used to hanging out with so but he has shown up here and so rare what he's doing um, to see an angler catch as many, you know, good quality fish. We're talking about a bag of fish where a guy's not, you know, traditionally your day one leader here weighs in a nine pounder and a seven pounder. And you're like, well, good luck repeating that again. What Scott's doing looks very repeatable. And for the most part, other than a brief moment when his roommate went in there, it looks like he's got the area to himself and... We say every year when we come to Okeechobee, getting an area to yourself is so key and so important here. So Scott Martin is really, what he's doing right now is very, very impressive. Dave, Davey Height, Avi, and you seem to take a, emotional offense to when coworkers do not like the Chiefs. Davey Height, probably the biggest Philadelphia Eagles fan on earth. Did you tell that jabroni to know his <laughs> role and shut your mouth, yeah. boy? at all during the broadcast today because I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it, Dave. Uh, if, if this is true, I mean, it is well, true. I'll be honest, our relationship's a little strained, a little strained because Lee Livesey has started this rumor saying that Davey Height's going to make a comeback. And I asked Davey on live earlier, and the, the pause was a little awkwardly long, I'll be honest. Um, so I think that me and Davey have bigger problems, but I will tell that to Brody to shut his mouth and know his role <laughs> tomorrow on live. With all due respect for a Bassmaster Classic champion, two-time Angler of the Year, Hall of Famer. Are you, are you a, a, sort of starting to taper off all the exultation over the big Chiefs win right now at this point? Dave? No. Are you no. done with that yet? No. <laughs> we have not yet begun, oh. Tommy Sanders. You know, I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, 
What do you, what do you, okay, uh, well, I'll change the subject. I don't, I, I don't want to talk about the Chiefs anymore. <laughs> then, we, then we have to. Okay, what do you, what, the top <laughs> six, the cut, what are the top six weights going to be? What, uh, what's going to be the, the minimum to be in the top six and to be on camera with us tomorrow? What do you think? Ooh. Well, be honest, I was just out at a, a, a really nice lunch, and I haven't looked at the leaderboard <laughs> recently, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to say, I mean, honesty is the best policy, but I'm going to go out and say 22 to 23 pounds. Wow. Am I anywhere close? Uh, I would think. No? I think he yes. is. I, I, think, I think he'd be close. Dave, don't worry about the gator. As we say in Arkansas, if you don't start nothing, there won't be nothing. So Shut we'll, we'll mouth, leave it at boy. that right there yeah. for the way into the great Shut Dave your Mercer. Mouth, boy. Yes, okay. <laughs> Keep celebrating. Keep on celebrating. We love it. We love it. Dave Mercer and his Chiefs. Oh. How are you going to beat that? There he is again. Getting ready for the way in starts at 3.30 Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com on the Yeti hot seat. Oh, there was awkward yes. pauses with Davey and Dave. There was awkward, awkward pauses in that. Yes. Last segment. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I couldn't we couldn't get the couldn't get the theme going right there. <laughs> we'll work on it. The first day of school, as you say, Mark Sona. Yeti hot seat will be Scott Martin as it stands right now, but there is a lot more fishing, a lot of more time for much of our field to get something and something big done. So don't go away. <laughs> yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Yamaha. Day one here on the big O Lake Okeechobee. As you can see, beautiful weather today. Ooh. Not much wind at all. In fact, at one point of the day, there was complaints about not enough wind, but what are you going to do? TH Marine Weather Watch <laughs> right now, currently 82 <laughs> degrees, mostly sunny. Uh, that's, that's Chamber of Commerce stuff right there. Even warmer tomorrow, uh, low of 61. That means a warm night, high of 88. Wow. Man, man, it's just keeps getting better and better. But wind, yes. this place so susceptible to wind. No storms on the horizon, nope. but wind is a thing you don't want. Now we got a little minor cold front going into Saturday, and that's the one we're going to keep our eye on. That's when the winds are going to shift from the north to the northeast, changing things up. Be interesting to see, to see the adjustments a lot of your leaders are going to make Saturday and back to south winds on Sunday. TH Marine Weather Watch. Brandon Lester, his top water bait there. A couple of nice adjustments right now. Brad Watley with a five pound, five ouncer. Really? He is uh, climbing, and so is Clifford Perch with the second biggest bass of the day, seven pounds, six ounce. He's in sixth place all the way from about 56th. Oh, you can about watch that all day long in February, in the Tommy Sander? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perch is another one of those guys from Arizona, the West Coast, does well in smallmouth. But man, when we come to Florida, Perch catches giants at St. John's. Oh my gosh. Huge yeah. bags there. The Harris chain last year, he caught that almost double digit in, in a popka. Or in a, not in a popka, in a griffin. Brandon Polnick. Really turned his day around. Oh, absolutely. He flushed it. He flushed it. I don't feel like Davy's retirement like from Bassmaster like Live is going to come from Lee Livesey. I just don't feel like that's. <laughs> you, I, look, you don't. You don't. There okay. was a weird okay. retirement, or like an early okay. one earlier this week by Kevin Van Dam, and then then the actual Lee announcement Lee came out. Yes, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I feel like it's going to come from Davy. I would think so too. Yes. I, uh, I don't. <laughs> and Davy, understandably, you know, it's it's not on him to. 
confirm or deny every rumor that comes Oh, I wouldn't right? say a word. Yeah, so yeah. Hold the cards close, friendo. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But do you feel, Tommy, not saying a word? <laughs> see, confirm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's the let's thing. measure the yeah. pause, well, do everything. Yeah, like see, I mean, you know, it's just I don't know. Hard to gain. I let's be. Know. Whenever we do an on camera with Davey this week, let's be very suspect and distant. <laughs> yes, yes. On anything, he's Davey. Hi. While we've got yeah. you, the and I mean, at three. Are yeah. you while sure? we've got you, right. sure. You know, for <laughs> a minute. For a minute, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, sure, I have talked for a while that he needs to go in and get an open and get his five grand and top two million dollars in earnings. I don't think Davey's worried about that. No, I don't know. I really don't think he's worried about that at all either. Well, how are you going to say? How are you going to play both sides of the fence there, Suge? You can't bring it that's up and neat, say though. he doesn't think that's going to happen. I doubt he'd do it for that reason. Well, we've worked with Davey for a while. When you paint him into a corner like Mercer was, it, he, he don't like that. He does not know? like that, no. Yeah, I can see no. Mercer getting a tune-in up <laughs> before week's end. <laughs> Now, a lot of people would be ecstatic if Davey got back in the game. Well, not us. We'd cry like a stuck <laughs> right, hog. Right. I mean, we it's would more be. more work on, on us. Right? Well, no, yeah. and we'd miss Davey. <laughs> Davey's great. So, yeah, we don't, we don't want that to happen. Well, I just reported that Clifford Perch had our second biggest bass of the day at 7-6. Justin Atkins, all his fish just came in. He got a 7 and a half. A bag of only 13 and a half. Things were snapping up there by Larry Nixon. Unfortunately, it was not in his boat. I believe he was sitting on two fish, correct? Yes, yes. Watched a couple big ones get caught. Back to Larry Nixon live. Yeah, needs a couple of big ones here. Kind of set his day straight. He's got time. Well, we got five. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's not two. Yeah. They ain't worth a hoot, but we got five. Pitiful. Pitiful. Now seven pounder. Another interesting aspect to the new crop of anglers on the Elite Series is Larry Nixon joins us from the Legends aspect of it. Joey uh -huh. Sefuentes qualified, fished professionally, and qualified to the Southern Opens. They live near each other, right down the street. Right. Joey grew up as a co-angler and fished with Larry Nixon and traveled with him across the country as he was learning the ropes of tournament fishing at the national level, then stepped to the front of the boat and has been successful the last three or four years after Larry, you know, yeah. took him under his wing to start his career. So two, kind of unusual. two old pals back yeah. together just on a different different circuit. background, Tommy? I do. It might help a little. Yeah. yeah. It's a solid uh, sure. fish. Mm -hmm. Gallinule. Yep. Yep. Know exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's an alligator. There you go. Little lizard.
I can make a suitcase out of him. I bet you a <laughs> pair of boots. <laughs> First fish we saw today, we're aware of. Early this morning, it's been a little bit of a struggle for him. A few more high points though. Greg Hackney. Our two top rookies from last year, Jay Secure and Cody Huff, just uh, eclipsed 18 pounds, staying at six and seven. Kind of noticed things turned around a little bit when Hackney started swim jigging a little bit more than we saw him punching and flipping the majority of the morning. There's another place just like this. <laughs> we'll say a couple. He's very quiet. Still need a yeah. seven pounder. We'll know. say a couple locals who fish Okeechobee Because my deal daily. was I like it. Catch 20. Our huge Hackney fans, oh, and right. they texted me and said, I hope he just just keeps 20. the swim jig in his hand and doesn't stick just to just Florida. flipping yeah. in this event. So it's interesting that just on day one, he's made that adjustment, and we see the results. Really seem to like it where it's a little cleaner. about them biting in the afternoon. I just need to run across a big one. There's a lot of males in this area, which is a good sign because before the tournament is over, there'll probably be another wave of females come in here. At least I, I would hope so. Um, we're just gonna ease around in here for this last little bit of time. I mean, I, I have no doubt there's some big ones left in here. You know, this place has gotten a ton of pressure over the past week or so, but there's something under my bait right now, but I don't think it's very big. I'm seeing a lot of fish moving around and waking in the pads. You just gotta put your bait in front of one. There's a lot of place for these fish to be, a lot of places for them to hide. We'll see what happens. I mean, we're one big bite away from having a decent day. Don't get me wrong, it could have been a lot worse. Well, we got some big ones coming across the board. 
Skyler Hamilton, a 6 0, 14 pound total. Ed Lofren, a 7 14, our second biggest fish of the day. He's over 20 pounds now. 20 pounds, 2 ounces, and then in fourth place. Well, I think Davey Height's going to win the $1 bet with Kobe Krieger when they said 8 pounder above yesterday on the pre show or below was big yeah. fish, and Davey took the over 8, and Kobe took under 8. Mm -hmm. So if Bernie Schultz's 8-8 eight, eight sticks, we'll decide that on day one. Now that doesn't go to Davey's bottom line for BASS winning, so he's not a dollar closer to the two million club. Hard not to watch that, that bait of Lester's. Oh, yeah. It's hypnotic. Ooh, absolutely right, Tommy Sanders. We've had Scott Martin. Who else did we Brandon have for the Brandon Pollen mm -hmm. for the power pole replay of the day? Brandon Lester really cranking things off with a big one here early. Come get it. Oh, that's exactly what happened right there for Brandon Lester early today, wanting to start off the season like he ended it. One that's going to help power pole replay the day. Brandon Lester, that was a tight one. Was a, yeah, that, that, was, was, a, that was a compact. It's all good. Go for it. It's all good. Compact. The good, the long ones are good. The short ones are good. Scott Martin, <laughs> still on top. Steve Kennedy, hanging in there tight. Tyler Avet, another guy who's picking himself to win Angler of the Year. We'll take note of that. Ed Lochran, Ed Lochran, up into fourth place here. Drew Cook, Bernie Schultz, Cody Huff. Shakira, Clifford Perch, and Brandon Cobb. Our top 10 as it stands right now. We'll be back with more. The Site One Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is sponsored by Mincota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon over at the Dakota Lithium Screen and Knowledge. We got just a couple minutes left in our show and about an hour or so for most of these anglers before they check in and call their day official for day one. So I wanted to kind of get a little bit of a revisit. If you selected the chalk team, let's just say you went to each bucket. You just picked the guys that were the highest percentage folks. I'm not going to say who in studio. Mike Sukon picked all chalk oh. anglers for the first event of the season just to get his you feet wet, but he did. And it's actually paying off decently for you, Such. John Cox, not too bad right in the middle of the pack. Greg Hackney, right in the middle of the pack, but he's ha having a better afternoon to improve. Scott Martin being in bucket C, 65%. Cliff Prince, 44th place right now. He was 27% in bucket D. Hank Cherry, 20%. He's in the top 40 or so, roughly on Bass Track, as it continually changes. So every single one of the chalk picks, the highest picked person in each bucket, they are in the day three cut right now, the top 50. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I wanted to give the transparent response as well. With my team, I have to have accountability at the screen of knowledge. And other than Bernie Schultz in the top 10 and Chris Johnston, who popped in in around 15th place, Everyone else is at risk of getting cut. Hank Cherry down in the 40s, right around that cut line. Brian Schmidt, surprisingly, in the 70s right now. And Jacob Poroznik in the 60s. Both guys having a quick morning, getting a limit, seven, eight pounds, but nothing much this afternoon. So hopefully, if they do have a later flight, you'll have to check Bass Track. Even while weigh-in's going on, there will be some big moves for your fantasy fishing team and for the tournament itself that happen each afternoon for about the last you know hour or two, even during the first you know half of the weigh-in. So keep an eye on Bass Track for your fantasy team and for the contenders in this event as it changes this afternoon and beyond. Thank you, Ronnie. Such, did you do that chalk? All chalk pick is yes. an experiment, or is yes. it so just to see where you ended up? Yeah, I, don't, I can't win anything, so <laughs> why not? No, Give it a shot. you said I, I don't like even Scott know. Martin, though, for sure. You said I don't even know where Lake Okeechobee is. I'm just going to go with the chalk. Oh, did That's I? What you said. Are you going to continue to, to do that? <laughs> no, no. You no. just laying down a chalk just base for all one. the other. Yeah, just to bad see chili where you end up. That's going to pick the highest pick guys in the first event too. And Hackney is not updated. He's not uh, that low. 
Speaking of Chris Johnson, I think that's him right in front of Scott Martin there. Make a little move. Oh yeah, it has been a display today. Talk about somebody that dialed up the excitement early. Mercury official engine move of the day. Read it right off the screen, Tommy. Yes, <laughs> you did. It's what I did. It's what happens when you do that. Yep. A little bit of topwater action to warm you up here at day number one of the Bassmaster Elite Series, Lake Okeechobee. Pretty much had this area all to himself for about, let's call it three quarter, nah, about half of the day. His roommate Scott Canterbury slid on in here and the damage pretty much was already done from Scott Martin. Got some old school home cooking, fishing a topwater bait today. Caught one fish, I believe. We got to see him catch one Flipping. That was that bass right there, actually. We are live, my friend. The Mercury move of the day. It is you, Scott Martin. Big, big morning will be an interesting day, too, to see how he manages it with his roommate. Mercury move of the day, Scott Martin. He was brandishing that fish and calling your name. That was, that I don't was, know. You know? I, I, what? I have What's respect. With that? I have a lot of respect for Scott. Okay. Incredible fisherman, promoter. TV show host. Tommy, I'll throw it to you. On I know Ronnie ran out of here, but on that whole fantasy fishing thing, yeah, you, you have the obvious. You have the Drew Cook, Drew Benton next week at Seminole. Right. Throw me, throw me an outlander. For Seminole? Throw me a, a y just give me something self-admitted. <laughs> give me somebody else. Let me think. Let's take and see what we can do. Yeah, give me just one second. I'll give you something. Okay. Well, Whoa. How about Todd Orton? Why so? I don't know. He really, <laughs> he really likes the, uh, the bladed jigs. You said okay. yeah. and okay. stuff like okay. that. Oh. You know, that's kind of what won it last time. I don't have a whole lot to go I'm on. I'm going top dual top 15 finishes from one Bernard Schultz. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Uh, that'd be great. Are you, are you gonna, like, is that the one event you pick him for Drain the Lake, or are you talking Rapple of Fantasy where? Stay in your lane. I'm just, I'm just asking which sorry, strategy Tommy, is Tommy, sorry, I, I apologize. That's, sorry. Now that I'm back, Z, I heard Unnecessary. your question. Can I throw it? Can I throw Absolutely. A I like Brian New next week. I Seminole. agree with that. With a style. I agree with, that. I agree with, with that. some history there. And I think a lot of people are going to pick him at Murray or Santee or, and things like that because it's the state he lives in. But I think Seminole's going to set up well for Brian New. I can give you my Ooh. Uh, season uh, drain the lake. That, that we did that we did Such and, and Ronnie and I did the master yeah. list for the whole whole season drain Ahead the of lake time. for Seminole. Do you want to you want to hear that? No. Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I got gross. Okay. okay. Canterbury. Mark and Micah Frazier. How about that? Both. Ooh, All right. Both. Lehew, Heron, Nixon, and Rivette. For Seminole. A red hot okay. Rivette. I, so are I you did saving, it. did you use the Drews this week? Or are you saving them for I'm Santee? saving them. Uh, yes. Okay. Or later. Something else? Where okay. are you saving them for? I'm very curious. Actually, actually, I used Drew Benton this week. Oh, you did? On, the, on, this, oh, okay. on this, okay. this list, yeah. I tend to go chalk because when I see the guy who is supposed to do well there and I haven't You're picked so. him, I am very upset with myself. Why didn't I pick Lee Livesey to win at Fork? Right, right Ronnie? Right. Hey, yeah. easy. He was on my drain the lake. You want it? <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> Scared me. That is, it is frightening. You're going to hear a lot more of that through the next three days. Oh, oh yeah. Three months. It's <laughs> a nice fish.
Oh boy, Nixon still getting a show from oh, his so vantage high. point. That's a looks like a dadgum that's good a cruise, one too. Cruise ship over there. Guy caught it on a grape worm chartreuse tail. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. It's a good one. Oh gosh! Yeah, I'll say. Oh no! Ay, ay, ay! Grief. Had a trivia on the Lake Okeechobee largemouth record caught on a shiner. Oh boy! Fifteen pounds, five ounces. That's not that, but that's a seven. Oof. Oh, no. Just having a time. It's what it's about. Hold it up over here. They boxed it. Must be there's a four, four man derby going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good for them. That was a good one. That was a good Shirts and skins. That, that's yeah, the that second good. big one we've seen come out of that. Third big one, if you count. Ray Heinzelman. Now you made a statement about what? this place earlier, Mark. This is basic, just one big spawn. There are no features here other than the vegetation. The right? lake is There's just no off drops, big flat. No drops, no ledges, no laydowns, not anything. It's just eerily flat. similar yeah. to Lake St. Clair minus all of that emergent vegetation. Yeah. Just a giant flat. Yes. So different. Besides the canals, the rim canals, stuff like that, it okay. is just an un unbelievably featureless, but if you look, really look at kind of what we've seen throughout the years, you kind of get in these usual typical areas. You know, you hear a lot of fish where they come to spawn are, are you know, basically like homing pigeons and they, they go back to the, and they, they do, they go back to, as long as the environment on the bottom contour stays the same, if you've got a hard bottom, whether it's pad stems or sandy mm -hmm. bottom, they. It, the, the same old, same old plays, you know, and, and really what you've seen with this new Okeechobee with last week's tournament, with this week's tournament, the hydrilla and the eelgrass would spread the field out much more than the situation that you're in now. Without those areas, those pockets of hydrilla and those pockets of eelgrass, it just condenses the fish and with that, it condenses the anglers in the tournament, the anglers that are not in the tournament. It's just the way it and, is. And the more of those two varieties you have, the cleaner water you have. Too, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. You, you know, and that's the that's really the the biggest Fish problem right now on Okeechobee open. with high water, with spraying grass, whatever whatever combinations of that get rid of that hydrilla and eel, eel grass is it just that that filters out that. That grass filters out the water so good and makes other areas clean. You just do not have that situation on this lake right now. Seth Fighter was quoted as saying, you know, this is this is not like chocolate milk water or tannic water. This is like you put a handful of leaves and a glass of water in a blender. That's, yes. that's kind of and, what it's like. You know, and the other and the other real problem of that is that outer right. wall, that outer wall of grass basically yeah. acts just like that. Whistling it acts like point. a wall and keeps God. The, the regular boil on it lake it? color and, and from pushing into these areas. And that's why it's really, really confined, the, the water clarity. And you've heard good water clarity in the state of Florida for, since bass fishing has started. And that's the biggest problem here right now with that high water. It lets that mud, not even that mud, just it lets that silty water invade a lot of the typical areas that we've been in in the past. That is one of the most puzzling things for folks who go to St. Clair or Okeechobee just for fun. You don't, everything looks good or it's all the same. But all looks like the same. Where, yeah, you could fish the same spot at Okeechobee in January as you do in July yeah. and catch same quality of fish. You just don't know why they're, the, you know, 
Well, at least at St. Clair, you got current. You don't even have yeah. current. Here. Yeah. You know, you got wind as your current. That's what Krieger was talking about. When if they did try to let water out, you've got this big of a place with a one lane or two lane yeah. road exiting out of it. It's not going to just flow out as fast as you'd like it to. No. You know, it's it's a much slower process. Well, he put on a show today. That was as yeah, hats off. Good a Scott first Martin. day as you can ask for of a Bassmaster Elite Series season to have on camera. That was absolutely excellent. Ah. Well, if someone knows whether or not they'll be back there again tomorrow, it should be Scott Martin has that knowledge. He is. He has proven that the home, the home experience is, uh, can be very, very valuable. What a day we witnessed staying with him in his boat for most of this morning. Scott Martin, the man on top with an estimated 26 pounds and one ounce. 104 anglers. Of course, when it's all said and done today, they will here, all baby. tee it up again tomorrow. Talking about trying to make, make that cut. Chubby, dude. Thank you, darling. <laughs> that is so. Uh, Oh, it's just good to be out there and listen to these guys talk. We will not be leaving the premises for a minute. Great fishing today, though. Very but I think you're so. right, Tommy. I, you were talking to Such and Ronnie about this, coming to this tournament. We thought, uh, beginning of the morning, the first two hours, no, maybe we might only see one or two 20-pound bags. That is not going to be the case. It is going to be a great, great way in there up in Okeechobee with Dave Mercer and the whole gang, and hoping, <laughs> hoping Davey Heidel join us again tomorrow. Yes, I don't know. Well, I don't of course know. he will. TBD. 8 a.m. Yeah. Eastern time on Bassmaster.com, the, the, the Fox digital platforms, including Tubi. And we will see you at that time. Have a great day. I don't know.